to be here and Scotland need a response tonight after the drubbing at the hands of Germany were underway Scotland kick off they're all in blue with yellow trim uh, on the shirts and shorts John McGinn receiving the ball from kickoff has played it long and right and out for a throw to Switzerland they are all in white if Scotland well can get themselves a couple of wins in the last two games then they're looking very very good obviously for the last 16 but four points should be enough as well at the very least for a best third place team as it has been in the last couple of Euros Kieran Tierney early chase back into his own half covers the run of Dan and Doy and he was actually knocked to the floor there so our Slovakian referee tonight has given Scotland their first free kick 45 seconds in Pat Nevin very noticeable what Scotland did with the kickoff took the kickoff put it right into the opposite corner and pushed up against Germany it was about 10 minutes before we got that fire up the park. Just the psychology of pushing the opposition back right at the start and getting yourselves a wee bit further up the field. Can't hear yourself think at the moment inside this stadium in Cologne. Angus Gunn with the goal kick down the right-hand side. Ralston leaps, beaten in the air, and it goes out for a throw into Scotland on the right. Gunn's in goal, three centre-backs, Jack Hendry. Grant Hanley has come into the team for the suspended Ryan Porteous after his red card against Germany. And Kieran Tierney again, the left-sided centre-back. Anthony Ralston and Andy Robertson, the two wing-backs. Billy Gilmore comes in tonight for Ryan Christie. He's alongside Callum McGregor in central midfield. McTominay, McGinn in support of Shea Adams wearing the number 10. And on the move through the middle, as Scotland win a throw in an attacking position. Taken quickly by Robertson down the left. The ball bounces twice, reaches McGinn, and he knocks it into the legs of Man well a Kanji to win Scotland the corner I mean the noise is just in a corner there for Scotland what is noticeable obviously Scotland are, they're, they're shooting into the side where the Swiss fans mostly are but even that winning a corner there the burst of noise you got from those Scotland fans uh, the Swiss aren't making it are they? <laughs> corner for Scotland away to our right slight pause referees happy low delivery bouncing ball into the near post Gilmore got a touch, he was half tackled Switzerland appeal for a handball and the referee decides that is a throw into Scotland right down by that corner flag as they attack wide on the left. That bounce just in front of him was Shane Warren at his best wasn't it? He tried to control it and it just went at a right angle away. Scotland have got the throw in still up the field that's a decent start for Scotland. Kieran Tierney has the uh, white match ball multi-colours of the Euros dotted all over it in triangular form in his hands wipes it on his shirt runs to the touchline and slings the throw in into the Swiss penalty area Xhaka up to head it away McGregor plays it out to Tierney Tierney's cross is blocked at close range by Vidma Tierney's header reaches Shea Adams couple of touches inside the Swiss box and Scotland win another corner the Andy Robertson cross uh, is blocked well I suppose the first thing you ask a team has had a bad defeat is Start on the front foot if you can. You know, try and make an impression in the game. Ask questions of the defence of the opposition. Scotland have done that. It's the early days, yeah. Got up two or three corners already. So they can be quite happy. The delivery wasn't good enough in the last corner. We should see if this is much better. Uh, Lyndon Dykes has rejoined us. We'll get thoughts from him in a second. Current Scottish centre forward obviously would absolutely love to be out there right now. As the Scottish corner comes in, oh, and it's caught by Jan Sommer, swerving over the head of Hanley. Good clean catch, and Sommer rolls it out into the Swiss half. Granite Xhaka driving forward, left footed ball through the middle. It's beyond Vargas, and Angus Gunn is able to collect it inside his uh, box. So let's say uh, a good evening once again to, uh, to Linden. Four minutes in, Linden. Decent start by Scotland. Great start. Um, you see from the kickoff there, they want to put the pressure on straight away. Got out the pitch, bodies up high, energy's high, and it's been good to get a couple corners early doors for a bit of confidence. And we're looking very threatening. Here's Hanley, clears with his right foot, good leap by Ralston. Adams have come for the header as well, so the flick on went beyond him. And Michel Abisher, who was so impressive for Switzerland in the first game, starting wide left again uh, in their 3 4 2 1. Plays the ball into the heart of the Swiss midfield, and now it's driven long by Fabian Scher down the right-hand side. Undoy against Tierney. Tierney wins that battle, clears on the half volley, high in the air, and out for a Swiss throw. Coming up to five minutes gone, Scotland nil, Switzerland nil. Notice both that Kieran Tierney there, reading it very, very well on the left-hand side. And just a few moments before, he did exactly the same on the right-hand side. 
So the Scotland players, the, the, the back three that Scotland have got, they understand they need to cover each other. Tierney, very good in the last first couple of minutes. Scotland looking switched on and very much up for the challenge, which is exactly, I think, what everyone expected. Jack Hendry wins it on the halfway line. Little Billy Gilmore, short pass to McGregor. Back to Hanley, misplaced pass, intercepted by Vargas. He overruns it. McGregor steps in to sort it out for Scotland and plays it back to Gunn, the goalkeeper, on his left foot. Clears up to the halfway line. John McGuinness shoved over by Fabian Scher. Free kick for Scotland. Here's the Swiss team very quickly for you before more thoughts from Pat. Jan Sommer of Inter Milan in goal. Scher, Akanji, Ricardo Rodriguez, their three centre-backs. Uh, Sylvain Vidmer of Mainz, wide on the right. Abisher on the left. Remo Freuler, Nottingham Forest player on loan last season at Bologna, who had such a good season in Serie A alongside Granit Xhaka, uh, winning his... 127th cap for his country tonight. Dan and Doy and Ruben Vargas in support of Sheridan Shakiri, and we have not mentioned Shakiri's name in commentary as yet. Free kick goes long from Teddy and behind for a Swiss goalkeeper. It's interesting how the, the Swiss are playing. Shakiri sometimes plays up top. The way they're playing, they're quite often leaving it three Swiss against three Scottish defenders, and it's really positive from Stevie Clark. It's a brave thing to do, you know, because they have good, good players, they have got a lot of bad pace, and Doyle's quick on that right hand side, but Scotland at the back are going man for man really regularly, right from the top. BBC Radio 5 Live, available on the BBC Sounds app if you're on the move throughout this Euro 2024. Scotland nil, Switzerland nil. Long ball downfield from Switzerland, Gunn comes out to deal with it, clears it away, out for a throw to the Swiss, level with the edge of the Scotland penalty area uh, on the right. Vargas came short to collect it, but Switzerland go back towards the halfway line. Shares ball down the right to Vidmer. Scotland are able to push up the field here, and Switzerland come back to goalkeeper uh, Jan Sommer, who's in a sort of powder blue goalkeeping outfit this evening, which he's touched off with bright orange gloves and bright orange boots. Now there is Shakiri running in circles just inside his own half. McGinn goes thundering into a challenge, free kick given against him. But the reaction from the Scottish fans from again getting stuck in there. Actually, had a, just taking a very quick free kick there. But the action, you know, that Scotland have had to play so far is, you know, very quick in the midfield, closing down, making a couple of tackles. They've got away with a couple already. Well, I say got away, I think they're definitely good. Didn't that time, but it's a big part of Scotland's game tonight. They need to make sure that the Swiss don't feel comfortable in the ball, John particularly at Manzaka goes chasing again for Scotland yes yeah, Steve Clark picked him out in particular Granite Xhaka who can boss things for Switzerland as he's done for Bayer Leverkusen last season as he did against Hungary as Tony Kroos did against Scotland in the opening game Rodriguez dark hair tied back brings the ball forward plays it to the left of Vargas Vargas comes back to the Swiss skipper Xhaka in turn, here's a Kanji. McTominay comes racing up the field to put a Kanji under a bit of pressure. He plays to his right to share. Shakiri drops in. Poor layoff from him. Scotland win it back and a chance to counter against Switzerland here. McTominay trying to thread it through to Adams. The pass is intercepted by Rodriguez and it ends up at the feet of Jan Zommer. Eight minutes in, Scotland nil, Switzerland nil. Again, it's much, much higher up the time that Scotland are able to do. They're closing down. It's a hard thing to keep on doing for me, man. It has to be said, but so far they've asked a few questions and seen much more of McTominay and definitely a lot more of them again in this game than we did against Germany. Now that's a clever ball from Abisher to get Vidmer away down the right-hand side. Scotland have got to be careful here. Not a good touch from Vidmer. Hanley's got it covered. Vidmer's nudged him in the back. That's either going to be free kick Scotland or goal kick Scotland. Nine minutes in, Scotland nil. Switzerland nil. Uh, Lyndon, let's bring you in once again. Scotland centre forward Lyndon Dykes with us. Um, playing in this atmosphere, Lyndon, as a Scotland player at a major tournament, must be very, very special for the boys out there. Yeah, it's what you dream of. Um, it's absolutely electric in here. So loud for everyone. Everyone will be hearing it down there. Um, and the confidence you get from just winning corners, winning throw ins high, strong tackles from again there. It lifts the crowd and it lifts you on the pitch. So it's the best feeling you can have as a player and obviously in the stadium as well for the for the people watching. Just a slightly unusual thing happening there. And you notice Tierney took the goal kick, yeah, not to the goalkeeper. And uh, you know, so if you're in opposition, you immediately look at that and think, hmm, something wrong with the keeper. Uh, Ricardo Rodriguez is down, so Tierney's goal kick reached Shea Adams. Adams chested the ball down. Rodriguez came through the back of him to win a header. Adams was trying to flick the ball over his shoulder and just uh, grazed him in the mouth with his right boot. So that will be a 
free kick to Switzerland. A Kanji, high diagonal ball to the left-hand side, chested down by Vargas. Ralston has it covered for Scotland. Vargas tried to knock it past him. Ralston plays it to Hendry. Gilmore side put it past, beats Ralston, and that goes out for a throw into Switzerland on the left. Ten minutes played. Scotland nil, Switzerland nil. But see the difference there. You you seen we Billy Gilmore. He gave the ball away. But he was showing for it. He will always, always, always show for it. And eventually, as the game develops, and by the way, he closed down very well there. As the game develops, he gets a little bit more space and he gets a little bit more control. Well, that's the policy anyway. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Scotland have, uh, have hassled Vargas out of possession. He panicked a little bit there with two men in front of him and knocked it out for a throw in on the right. So, current Scotland centre forward Lyndon Dykes is with us. Former Scotland international Pat Nevin, as always, who played for Scotland at Euro 1992. And of course, uh, an under 18 European Championship winner with Scotland back in 1982. The only major tournament Scotland have ever won at any level. And Pat Nevin uh, was in that squad. Uh, and in that team, and there's a fabulous documentary about, isn't there? You can find about that, find out about that on the BBC iPlayer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's lovely, actually. It's very, very moving, actually. Yeah. Go to the last final on BBC. Go and find it. Go and find it. This game on BBC One tonight via the iPlayer as well. If you haven't done it already, you can listen to our commentary uh, with the BBC TV pictures, and it will be perfectly synced up. 11 minutes into the first half. Kanji's got the ball just on the edge of the Swiss penalty area. Languidly strokes it forward with his left foot. Shakiri's come deep and lays it off here to Cher. Cher with the longer ball down the right. It's chased by Abisher. Uh, Jack Hendry is stuck with him. Hendry, oh, not a great back pass there. Beyond gun and behind for a Swiss corner. Again, he was very strong winning the ball. Just a little bit excited there. And I think a lot of the players are quite pumped up at the moment. But it is very noticeable how brave Scotland are trying to be just now. Uh, it is a very, very high line. We are often going one for one at the back, believing in the pace of the centre backs. Uh, it's you know it's a big call, but you don't get through in big championships unless you take chances. So corner for Switzerland, pocket rocket. Jordan Shakiri will take it, playing in his seventh major tournament for his country 32 years old now stocky little fella bright orange boots rolls the corner short work to the edge of the box here's Froiler Froiler back to Shakiri. controls it touches it crosses it McTominay is up high to win the header for Scotland second header is powered away chested down by Gilmore lovely first time pass from him releases Andy Robertson Robertson driving forward here into the Swiss half he's got Xhaka back pedaling plays to McGregor McGregor controls back it comes McTominay oh it's deflected in it's deflected into the roof of the Switzerland net and Scott McTominay super Scott McTominay has done it again for Scotland just the start they wanted in Cologne you cannot hear yourself think it is absolute bedlam. Scottish fans going wild. Scotland won. Switzerland nil. Well, that is Stevie Clark, Scotland. That's what you expect. Down the left-hand side, great power, willingness to get into the earth. What a beautiful touch by Bill Gilmore. He was under all sorts of pressure, got out of his feet, and he played Tierney, who must have made about 70 yards and left the ball onto McGregor. And when he puts it back to McTominay, he just guides it on target. Keeper probably would have saved it if it didn't get a deflection. Doesn't matter. It's in the net. And Scotland, once again, another Mac scores in an international tournament. Yeah, that's the golden rule. Scotland goals at the Euros. His surname has to be prefaced with Muck. And Scott McTominay, seven goals in qualifying. Massive goal tonight in Cologne. What a confidence boost that will be. Scotland have started well and they've got themselves in front against this tournament-tough Swiss team. Fabian Scher was the one who stuck out the right leg. As Pat Nevin says, Jan Sommer may well have saved the initial shot. It was on target. I think McTominay will get the goal, but the deflection played a massive part. High into the roof of the net it went. And if possible, the volume levels have gone even higher. <laughs> yeah, it incredible. Look, it's got a feeling this game but almost every game in this tournament, this isn't finished. There's going to be twists and turns, there's going to be other goals, there's going to be a lot happening in this, in this game. Just the openness of it, and I love that openness. Kelly was talking about earlier on, about the fact that you need a bit of chaos, and we've got an awful yes. lot of chaos in this tournament, and Scotland are adding to it here. Scott McTominay, goal scorer, just been caught, he's OK, picked himself up, and Jan Sommer... Swiss keeper has the ball at his feet. Next time the ball's out of play, we'll get the thoughts of Lyndon Dykes once more. On his feet, of course, celebrating that Scotland goal. 
Scotland having lost 5-1 to Germany cannot afford to lose this evening a win would put them in great shape in Group A Germany already through to the last 16 over hit back pass again from Tin he claims he was pushed over there he's not going to get that decision and Switzerland will get a corner let's get the thoughts from Linden on the Scotland goal Linden Great goal, um, obviously from the corner there, great little touch from Billy, got past the defenders, Robbo raring down there, using his energy to get high up on the pitch. And obviously getting the, up there, they had the calmness that they had. Cal McGregor take a great touch, looks back, McTominay comes in and a great finish with a little bit of luck, but we'll take it. Yeah, Scotland will take it all day long, corner defending now for Scotland whipped in McTominay's there up highest heads it away Rodriguez with a left footed volley bouncing wide and behind it goes for the Scotland goal kick it's one of those ones where Rodriguez is coming on it's not in a good position for a left footer so this here kind of wrap his body around it and it came to such a great height I was thinking you know what it's going to have to be special from there and then I thought there's been a lot of special goals in this tournament so far haven't there they've been absolutely phenomenal goals from outside the box this time we couldn't get it on target and uh, once again we can breathe slightly but not for long. Gone down as a Fabian Share own goal. Really? Yeah, on the screens in front of us. Fabian Share own goal. I think Scott McTominay. It was definitely on target. Yeah, it goes directly to the target. Absolutely. They must have different rules in this competition. Yeah. I mean, as you say, Pat, Jan Sommer I think would have saved the initial shot, but that's yeah. not always the rule we go by, is it? No, it's, it's on target. Uh, so a Rudiger own goal against Germany and at the moment credited as a Fabian share own goal it does not matter Scotland leads Switzerland by a goal to nil and if they can win this game long long way to go as Pat's been explaining of course we're only 16 minutes into the first half it will set them up quite brilliantly for the final group game against Hungary uh, in Stuttgart on Sunday night five live will be there nine o'clock kickoff full commentary do not miss it and by the way tomorrow five o'clock your time England against Denmark on 5 Live and BBC Sounds, a game you can also watch on BBC One and sync up with the 5 Live commentary, just like you can with this one tonight. A drop ball after it uh, struck the referee. It's worked out to Vargas on the left, inside the penalty area, cross deflected and into the side netting corner for Switzerland. Scotland lead 1-0, Pat Nevin. Big moment there for Anthony Ralphs, and that's the first time, you know, the wing has gone and attacked him. And he's got down the line, he's got a half a yard, but Ralston got the foot in, giving away the corner kick, but, you know, he's been asked a question, he's had the answer in this first occasion. So, Scotland with some defending to do. Their fans behind this goal away to our left at Switzerland are attacking. Vargas's corner in, dealt with and headed away. First time Bass back to Rodriguez, clash of heads inside the penalty area. Fabian Scher is the man down for Switzerland. Is it Tierney? No, is it Hanley? I think that's Grant Hanley, is it? Or is it Ralston? Um, yeah, it's hard one to see. Flat on his back for Scotland. It's hard one to see. Yeah, it, it is hard to see who actually took the final whack there. I think it's Ralston. Ralston, yeah. Yeah, it's Ralston. Yeah. Funnily enough, he's, Thank he, you, Linden. he's headed it and he's, he's come down on his back. And I think he may well be winded. It's one of those ones. I'm not sure if he got a head knock or not, but he can twist your neck when you do that as well. Yeah. Yeah, both players down receiving medical treatment at the moment, so we're going to get a slight pause in the game. Fabian Scher, who's been credited with the own goal, and Anthony Ralston, who landed extremely awkwardly there, but is thankfully sitting up. Scotland leading Switzerland by a goal to nil at the moment. There's always a reaction, isn't there? Um, when you, you give a goal, if you score a goal, the opposition sometimes get a left, and they try and put you under a little bit of pressure, and you need to try and survive the next few minutes without losing it, and they've managed to do that Scotland and that's a big big thing for them a big big moment for them that they've managed to do that so Anthony Ralston is on his feet Fabian Scher is still receiving treatment uh, Linda at what, what point was the last point today you were actually with the guys and with the team what, what was the last message you heard from Steve Clark for the players ahead of this one yeah I was, I was with the team just before the game um, and his message was just to be positive he was always talking about positive three points um, it's not over and make sure you come out and show everyone that the other night was just a one-off and get back to the way that we are and the boys have definitely shown that so far so hopefully they can keep that going yep leading Switzerland by a goal to nil Fabian Scher just coming off the field for a second having received treatment he's walking towards the halfway line Ralston is out on the field 
force gone. And what's the referee just say? Yeah, he's going to have to go off as well. That's what I thought. Both players are going to have to come off. They receive medical treatment before they can come back off. It looks okay. Um, I'm sure Lyndon would understand and relate to this. You've got to make sure the opposition know they're in a game. <laughs> so I think we've already showed them that on a couple of occasions. Yeah, definitely. Just got a bit more stuck into them, put a bit of pressure on them, don't let them play the way they want to play. Uh, so, so far, the boys are looking great. We have to make sure we keep being solid and make sure we put the pressure back on them. Now that's Lyndon Dykes with us here on 5 Live in BBC Sound. Scotland leading 1-0, defending at the moment. Vargas, Swiss forward with the ball at his feet. Now Xhaka, inside left channel, back to Avisher. Avisher, who's played one of Pat Nevin's favourite passes of the tournament, I think, so far for the Swiss oh, first yes. goal. Very De Bruyne-like. It was, wasn't it? That's right. For the one that Dua stuck away for Switzerland early on against Hungary, but Dua doesn't start tonight, Shakiri does. Scotland fans roar the fact that they fought Switzerland all the way back to their goalkeeper. Here's the danger man, though. Jordan Shakiri rumbling forward, plays the ball out to the right. Dan Doy, another Bologna player in this Swiss team, just feeds it back into the Swiss half. Here's a Kanji, runs away from Shea Adams, gets his pass away to Freuler, forward to Shakiri. the ball just jumps up on him, brings it down, Freuler again, forward to Shakiri, turns, slides the pass down the right for Vidma, strong challenge from Robertson, sliding in, cleanly wins the ball, Switzerland get a corner. Big moments for Robertson and Antione down the left-hand side. Uh, when they go and attack, they are brilliant, it doesn't matter which one, I think it was actually Robertson, it did attack for the goal but both of them are covering each other they understand each other's games and both of them have had very very strong starts here scotland have had six wins in major tournament history the last of those if you're into football omens against switzerland back at euro 96 corner comes in from shakiri hanley is there jumps heads it straight up in the air Froiler challenges for it hendry heads it away to the left robertson volleys it away Ed everything scotland do positively at the moment it's a massive roar from the thousands of fans inside this stadium in those dark blue shirts. There's been a difficult period this last two or three minutes, so Scotland haven't really got a foot in the ball. There's going to be periods like that in a game that you could really do with getting the ball in the midfield and holding it a bit. Shakiri scoops it forward, McTominay's back there doing some defending, down by the byline on the left, does well, forward to Gilmore, lays it off to Hanley. Scotland playing out beautifully, McGregor was involved, McTominay plays it wide to Robertson, the Scotland fans are loving it at the moment, Robertson, little dummy, away he goes down the left-hand side, Akanji comes across to cover it and steps in and gets it back to Zoma. Again, you look at the movement there, we were under all sorts of pressure, zip, 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 pass, always involved in uh, is Billy Gilmore there. We got out and eventually made a really dangerous looking attack on the left hand side. He always made a big difference. Yeah, Gilmore trying to win a challenge in midfield. Abisher went down, advantage played. Switzerland bringing it forward with Cher. Cher just stabs a pass, short pass to his right to Xhaka. Xhaka in the short sleeved white Swiss shirt, warm evening in Cologne. Here's Abisher in central midfield. He's come in from the left hand side. Xhaka strokes it forward to Shakiri. Shakiri is able to turn. Out on the right for Switzerland, about 30 yards from the Scotland goal. But Scotland have it covered at the moment, so Switzerland come back to share. Ten yards inside the Scotland half, just comes creeping forward, then slides the pass through, Robertson against Vidma. Vidma gets the cross in, Hanley's there to clear it. The offside flag was up, and so Scotland will have a free kick. They lead Switzerland 1-0. Yeah, the concentration levels you need at this, this level is incredible. Um, but that's it. the players that Robertson have got that, you know. They are strange enough. The Swiss are going down the right-hand side a lot, yeah. aren't they? I was expecting to test Scotland's own right-hand side and their left-hand side a little bit more. Scarcely done that in the game so far. It may well be that we are partially fun funneling them down that side. But uh, at some point, and, and partly that is Shakiri likes to play over from that area, and that might be a part of the reason. But uh, if they're going to get down that side, I'm back in our lads. I'll just highlight as well, Scotland fans listening to us tonight, Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage will be taking the calls on 6.06 after this game, through until half 11 on 5 Live and BBC Sounds, the number to dial, the usual 08085 909 693. Scott McTominay has taken a whack on the head, uh, he is down. Scottish football podcast, by the way, will be well worth a listen tomorrow morning, as it will throughout this tournament, plenty of reaction uh, on the pod tomorrow, your one-stop shop for all the news, views and gossip from the Scotland camp at the Euros, so listen and subscribe to that on BBC Sounds. McTominay slowly picking himself uh, to his feet. In terms of the first 25 minutes, 
Lyndon Dykes that we've seen from Scotland. Was this exactly what you were uh, expecting from your teammates this evening? 100%. They've been on it. They're trying to prove people wrong that the night was a one-off game. So it's gonna, we've still got a long way to go. Obviously, Swiss are coming into the game a little bit more, controlling the ball. But you can see the bodies going forward. And like you said before, little plays at the back there, the options they have with the ball is helping everyone out. And we're playing out much more easy than the other night. Uh, Kanji with his left foot tries to get Switzerland out on the right-hand side. Cher comes trotting forward with the ball at his feet. Finds Shakiri. Side puts it back to Cher, and they come all the way back to Sommer. Shea Adams is interested for a second. Chase is in. Sommer plays it past him. Rodriguez sprints up towards the halfway line. Ball at his feet. Hanley intercepts that pass forward. Gilmore controls, passes, then it goes loose. Danger for Scotland. Shakiri! I don't believe it! What a finish from Jordan Shakiri! Into double figures for goals at major tournaments. Joining an exclusive list of players, and that was an absolute stunner, but Scotland will kick themselves for giving the ball away. It was unnecessary, and Shakiri has punished them to the highest order. Scotland won, Switzerland won. That is so hard to deal with. I mean, Scotland will try to play it the right way. Ralston's, he's not looked, and he's just passed it back towards a vague area where he thinks one of his teammates is going to be. Can't really do that. You need to find one of your teammates, and you give Shakiri. I mean, it's not it's not an easy chance. He's hardly actually kicked a ball in a game so far. But, you know, give him a chance to there, and he just pops down the top corner. And you would regret saying he would have wanted to start. Yeah. He's, hardly, he's hardly moved. He's hardly kicked the ball. And then, give him half a chance. By the way, <laughs> how close can you get to the, co the corner of the cross pattern can post them that. Yeah. That is incredible. Lyndon Dykes, that, that is an incredible finish, isn't it, by Shakiri? Incredible. And that's probably why he's coming to the team. Like you said, double figures now for competition football. Up there with the best. And he got half a sniff and he absolutely finished that peach of a shot. Oh, peach of a shot is absolutely right. Curling left-footed effort that started outside the post. Angus Gunn at full stretch couldn't get there. Rips into the top corner. Scotland won. Switzerland won in a game Scotland as we were saying at the start cannot really uh, afford to lose to have any chance of getting out of Group A so now they've just got to settle themselves again Pat yeah well I mean right after the goal I said look this isn't going to be finished at 1-0 <laughs> there's no way it's just not that kind of game it's just not being played in that sort of way Switzerland have the momentum at the moment oh Gilmore takes a whack in the face maybe that was the chest Jacker's cross attempting to whip one into the edge of the Scotland box and Gilmore was right in the path of it. It's gone out for a throw-in to Switzerland. 27 minutes gone in the first half. Here in Cologne, Scotland won. Switzerland won. Jordan Shakiri has scored in a sixth major tournament for Switzerland. Ten goals in total. Uh, Rodriguez cross into the near post. Danger for Scotland again. Comes all the way through to Vidma. Tees himself up and hits it high. And over the bar and behind for a goal kick to Scotland. Switzerland just having a, a good little period at the moment, Pat Nevin. I think their good little period has been since Scotland scored. And since then, they really have started to dominate the game slowly but surely. But Scotland have tried to play up to the back and have done so much more than they did against the Germans, even in this period. But there is no doubt just now that they're on the front foot and they're controlling a little bit more of the play. We're going to have to do something a little bit close to them. And also, if we can just get some calm possession in midfield. We've seen this competition. It's not been easy to do that, has it? Goal kick Scotland. Angus Gunn takes this one with his right foot, swings it away to the left. Scotland do keep that in play. Awkward one fired back at Hanley, who heads it away. Nodded forward into the Scottish half. Tierney read the danger well there. Comes across and gets it back to Gunn. Gunn clears with his right foot. Shea Adams battling hard for Scotland just inside the Switzerland half, went sliding in, has caught Abisher. The referee, Ivan Kruzliak, didn't like the challenge. Switzerland players, a couple of them complaining about the challenge as well. Abisher's going to be OK for he kicks Switzerland. Yeah, I'm not surprised that Xhaka is the first one up there. He hasn't actually touched him in any way whatsoever. He's jumped over it there, rolled about a little bit. So, But he has dived in, he was slightly out of control. It, it was an honest challenge, but I think the referee spotted him right. Habersher, clever ball, finds Vargas moving at speed, here's the cutback. Scotland defenders did well to get their bodies in the way, McTominay tries to bring it out for Scotland now, central position just outside his penalty area. Feeds it to Ralston on the right-hand side, Ralston will be a little rattled having played the pass that gave the 
goal to Switzerland, but that's a floated ball from him across to Tierney, coming up to the half-hour mark in the first half here in Cologne, and Tierney feeds it to Robertson uh, on the left. Scotland just calming things down and keeping the ball for a little bit in this game. This man is perfect for that, that's Brighton's Billy Gilmore, so is Callum McGregor, receives it from Gilmore, sweeps the pass out to the left to Robertson, Robertson plays it back to Hanley, and Hanley just rolls it to Gilmore. Midway inside the Scotland half, assesses his options, Cross to Tierney, Robertson is parallel to him on the left-hand side, he goes forward to McGregor, back to Tierney and across it comes to the right again. Scotland didn't have a period of controlled possession like this in the, the previous game at any point in time, and it's, uh, it's good to see, it's game management we needed. Shay Adams, little ball to Gilmore, Gilmore's caught by Rodriguez, that will be a yellow card. Referee made the decision very quickly there, clever little pass from Adams, Gilmore was trying to sneak down the right, Rodriguez came sliding in, he's booked for the challenge. He knew what he was doing, I don't think he got a lot of Billy Gilmore there, just a little bit of him, but he made sure that Billy wasn't getting away, and he was going into a very dangerous area there, so Rodriguez has to be very careful from here on in. So it's been a good moment though, it's been good, we looked at all that moment, um, control that the Swiss had in the game, and then suddenly, just by a few passes, Gilmore, then on to McGregor, and then it has to be said, Ralston, lovely ball across the back there. It's given a little bit of comfort to the Scotland team. Really good game management at that point in time. Scotland won, Switzerland won. We knew it was going to be nervy. Here's Hendry. Hendry, high ball up towards the edge of the box. Over the head of McGinn. It drops to Xhaka eventually. He's happy to come back to his goalkeeper, Zoma. Right in the middle of his six-yard box, McTominay comes racing in to try and put a Kanji under pressure. Switzerland play up the middle of the park. Oh, that's a clever layoff from Shakiri. Back to Xhaka. Xhaka quickly forward to Ndoy. Great football this from Switzerland. Vargas up to the edge of the area. Switch pass again to Ndoy. Ndoy onto his right foot. Oh, good save, Angus Gunn. Shot was curling for the far corner. Gunn gets a hand to it and palms it behind for the corner. Oh, what a brilliant move. What a magnificent move by the Swiss. You're right. A little flick ball by Shakiri was the start of it but the pace in which they broke up. Um, I mean, just for a moment there, I thought Scotland were going to give away a penalty. Tierney went in there, left a little leg dangling. They didn't go down, well done for him. And it took a very special save there by going left hand round the corner. Scotland breathing again. Angus Gunn earning his corn for Scotland. Scotland fans mass behind this goal away to our left. 13 minutes remaining in the first half, still 1-1. Shakiri whips that ball in with pace. Gilmore heads it up in the air for Scotland. Back header from Akanji. Gunn gives it a shout. He's come early for it. And Doyle on the turn has scored, but the flag is up. It won't count for Switzerland. Now Doyle is waving his finger to say that he wants that checked. Angus Gunn came for the ball, didn't get there, and Doy with a clever finish, at the moment it's not going to stand. See, he was actually free just about for the entirety of that move, and Doy, no one picked him up from when the corner was taken, by the way, we're watching it here, it's unbelievably tight. To the naked eye, you cannot tell, it is very tight. Well, the yellow message is up on the screen at the moment, checking offside, leading up to goal. So we are waiting with bated breath inside the stadium in Cologne. Scotland won, Switzerland won, it was offside. The goal won't stand, Lyndon Dyke, that is a, a huge sigh of relief for Scotland. Yeah, massive, they had a great play there, the Swiss on the way there. Shakiri's touch took about two players out and the break was very quick. We have to be switched on on the set plays, we work on those. Um, it was a good win by Billy Gilmore at the start. Luckily, VAR was on our side that time, but the boys are just need to get back on the ball and get Billy back on it. Yeah, that's what Billy Gilmore was trying to do there. He thought he was brought down on the edge of the Swiss box. Cleared away by Fabian Scher with his left foot, and it goes out for a throw-in to Scotland. By the way, I know Lyndon Dykes plays centre-forward, but I wonder if he still plays poker, if he does play poker as well. Because you never change your view at all there. You look down looking so calm. We were all panicking there, thinking we could be losing the goal. <laughs> you looked confident. I'm stressing here, don't worry about that. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, great to poker have face. Linda with us on the coverage uh, this evening. John McGinn again, backing into Fabian Cher, goes down. Goes out for a Switzerland throw, right back position, level with the edge of their own penalty area. Just over 10 minutes remaining in the first half. Scotland won, Switzerland won. McTominay's deflected strike off Fabian Scher to give Scotland the lead. The equaliser coming with a quite sublime finish from Jordan Shakiri. Half a chance, really. Sweet his first time strike. And it has this game level. Angus Gunn's come a long way outside his penalty area. No one near him. 
feeds the ball to Hendry. Hendry plays to Hanley. Hanley rolls it into McGregor. McGregor's got time to turn here and then calmly plays forward to McGinn. On to McTominay. McTominay couldn't find Robertson down the left. Vidma lets it run. Throw in for Switzerland. And again, that was again the moment you've got McGregor. I mean, he's looking for it. And if you've got Gilmore marks at that point in time, it's fine. It's okay. Hanley can pass it into one or the other just now. We just didn't have that option. But at the moment, maybe trying and hoping to get a little bit more out of uh, John McGinn and Scott McTominay. Scott's been a little bit more involved, but John, it's been hard for him to get involved. He's mm. further upfield, you know, he's trying to get as close as he possibly can to Shea Adams at the moment, but he's not had a great impact in the game yet. Ten minutes remaining in the half. Scotland won, Switzerland won. 6.06 follows uh, our coverage of Euro 2024 this evening. Brought you a great game earlier on, first game of the day. Croatia 2, Albania 2. Germany beat Hungary by two goals to nil. They are through to the last 16. Germany, their last group game against Switzerland. This one, level pegging, 1-1. One, one. Billy Gilmore gets it from Ralston, gives it to McGregor. Straight back to Gilmore, just inside the Swiss half. Comes running across the halfway line. Back to Hanley. Tierney now across to Robertson. Robertson quickly forward to McTominay in the inside left channel. Uh, chased by Freuler. Tomine comes back to Tierney, uses McGregor. This is nice from Scotland, moving Switzerland around. Hendry lays it off to McGregor. McGregor just let that one go past him. Had to step in hard to win the ball back. Switzerland appeal for a foul on Shakiri. They don't get it. Gilmore can't see an option at the moment. Just throws his arms out as if to say there's nothing on. And Scotland come back and Jack Hendry uses Gilmore. Little one-two. Hendry just inside his own half to the right to Ralston. Ralston is chased up that right-hand touchline by Abisher. Ball for Shea Adams to chase. Bounces in front of Rodriguez. Adams slips. Rodriguez makes a bit of a mess of that. Adams wins it. Plays it across to McTominay. He treads on the ball, then edge of the box. But Scotland do get a free kick. 30 yards out or so in the inside right channel for a challenge on Adams, I presume. Uh, I, I we'll take it. <laughs> it's hard to see what we're getting it for, but we'll absolutely take it. Um, this is a, a, a bit of uncertainty there. Now, Rodriguez, obviously, is on a yellow card. Slip, slip sliding about a little bit there. Well done, referee spotted yeah. Frowler coming in late. And he's absolutely right. Good position. Get the ball right hand side into the box. Scotland have got a good few tall players there. Uh, Linda, what's the plan here then? There's a few things going on here. Um, Big Scott is on the ball, so it's going to be a fast delivery. Everyone's got their positions. John McGinn, I see, is moving right towards the goal line. Now he's coming back. Yeah, just, to, just ask a question, really, isn't it, uh, of their defence? They didn't quite so he came back. 1-1, one, one. Scotland, Switzerland in Cologne. Scott McTominay, left arm in the air, delivery with his right foot towards the penalty spot. Header is flicked, and then headed back across goal. The offside flag is up on the far side, so Switzerland will have a free kick. I think there's a little push there as well. Yeah. <laughs> the back post. Um, but again, decent position Scotland get into. I'm going to give him hands, ebb, ebbed and flowed a little bit. I worried that for a moment it was going to get away from Scotland, but it, it doesn't feel like that just now. It seems as if Scotland are actually playing a lot better, man. Yeah, Scotland have won the ball high up inside the Swiss half, and they're going to try and make something of it. They've moved it quickly out to the left. Robertson comes back to Hanley, who's almost on the centre spot. Uh, Gilmore's pass forward is easily intercepted. A Kanji, slightly loose touch from him, but he gets away with that. Able to take another touch, edge of his own penalty area. Strokes the pass with his right foot across to Freuler. And Freuler just jogging away from Callum McGregor, who now comes towards him. Ball into the midfield. McTominay's interested, slides in, almost wins it. Scotland pressure leads to a Scotland throw. Well, you get that is straight off the training ground, isn't it? Absolutely straight off it. Don't give them the, play, pre, the, the chance there to get the ball, hold it and create something. Ask a question, close them down. And spook them completely, well done. Robertson's ball back to Tierney from the Scotland throw. Grant Hanley, every Scotland outfield player inside the Swiss half until the ball is played back to Hendry. Just creeps into his own half, forward to Adams. Adams leaps athletically, brings it down on his chest, does well to bring Ralston into play, and Ralston on the move, crosses high. Now, is that going to go out? No, the ball will stay in. And it's a great pass. It's yeah. a great pass. <laughs> chased all the way out there by Robertson. Tierney's clever, lets Robertson's pass run across his body. Back to Hanley, Hanley plays the one-two with Gilmore, Gilmore gets it back, central position 40 yards out, forward to McTominay, now McGregor, McGregor zips a pass across the floor to Tierney, back it comes to McTominay, McTominay with a touch, thought about the early cross, decided against it, and Scotland working it across the field from left to right, here's Ralston, 
chased again by Abisher and Scotland forced to come back into their own half. Well defended by the Swisser, it didn't leave any gaps at all. Quite a few times McGregor, sometimes Gilmore, again McDominay, they want to get the ball and have a look, little look up to see if anyone's making a forward run. But in that occasion, the Swiss closed us down in good areas. If you're just tuning in, this is Five Live. BBC Sounds, Scotland 1, Switzerland 1 in Cologne. High long ball forward, Robertson streaking away from defenders here. Akanji gets back, nods it behind for a Scotland corner. <laughs> Robertson made some run there. He is full pelt there for about 70, 80 yards there. And, you know, he's, he turned around, he's put his hand up and said, great ball. I'll tell you what, if he's willing to make those runs all night, I don't think his defenders are going to want to stay with him. Really ask the question though, it stretches the game for us, and that's what we want. That's the voice of Pat Nevin, Lyndon Dykes alongside us in the commentary box as well here this evening, watching his Scotland teammates taking this corner, it's going to come in from the left, delivery to the far post, Adams, right footed volley, Sommer had it covered at the near post, and I grabs it at the second attempt. I thought it was a corner there, but I'm not sure it went out at all, but uh, it was a little half chance there, it was a difficult angle, and he, he certainly got it on target, but Sommer was ready for it. Uh, here's Freuler on the ball for Switzerland, Scotland now backpedalling, Freuler, Plays it to his right, Vidmer's cross comes in, it's deep, it's over the head of Ndoy, chested down by Ralston, Ralston down by the byline on the right, clearance is half deflected, spins over Abisher, over Adams, both players fall over, both want a free kick, neither get it, Switzerland have the ball, Shakiri pops up wide on the left-hand side, number 23 on his back, plays it to number 19 Ndoy, Ndoy comes creeping into the Scotland penalty area, now it's played back and the shot's hit at Gunn, Gunn throws himself to his left, that was Xhaka's strike, it's palmed away, still defending to do, cross comes in, ball is loose, goes spinning out of the Scotland penalty area again, and Scotland just having to survive a little period of pressure here at the end of the first half. Yep, and the, the pace of putting the balls in there, this way, the quality from the wide areas has been superb, and this time closed down very very, very well by Gilmore, his defensive stuff has been yeah. pretty special tonight as well. Yeah, Billy Gilmore's been doing it. Sterling job for, for Scotland tonight. Xhaka to Abisher. Abisher to Ndoy. Ndoy on the dribble for Switzerland. Hendry backs off. Ndoy with a little trick and then throws himself to the floor. Not going to get a penalty for that. Referee just wags a finger, shakes his head and says, get up and get on with it. Well, half of the odd one in this Scott Championship where they've been given yellow yes. cards for diving. That must have been tight. Offside. Offside flag goes up. Scotland won. Switzerland won busy time not just at the Euros at the moment next few weeks the Times 5 Live is made for home of the Euros of course Wimbledon and of the general election we'll keep you across all of it here on 5 Live for daily reaction and analysis of the big election talking points uh, subscribe to Newscast on BBC Sounds along with all the other pod offerings that are there Swiss fans bouncing up and down enjoying themselves uh, away to our right they've still got energy Scottish fans always have energy and Scotland's performance full of energy this evening. Took the lead against Switzerland. Shakiri's pegged them back. 1-1 at the moment in a game Scotland cannot afford to lose. Shea Adams has just lost out there. Difficult ball for him to try and control. Vargas plays it forward for Switzerland. And Doy tries to turn away from Tierney. And Doy's still going. Pokes it forward, but too much on that. And through it comes to Angus Gunn. Again, the energy levels. Look, Tierney get done there slightly. But the energy levels, because he went and made the tackle his right foot, then another one with his left. And it put Doyle off a little bit there, but there wasn't that sort of sharpness about Scotland's attempts defensively or offensively in the game against Germany. It's all over the game tonight. It's great to see Scotland back to who they are. Uh, here's Tierney on the ball for Scotland. Last couple of minutes of the first half. Inside his own half, wide to Robertson, slowing down a little at the end of the first half. Gilmore plays to Robertson. Scotland enjoying the possession at the moment, Tierney forward to Gilmore, back to Hanley just outside his own penalty area, wide to Hendry, Hendry puts plenty on the back pass to make sure it gets to his goalkeeper Gunn Gunn leaves it for Tierney, Tierney's jogging forward, looking up all the time sees McGregor coming towards him in the dark blue of Scotland he finds Hanley, back across to Tierney last minute of the first half without a time still to come McGregor lays it off to Robertson back to Tierney again patient stuff from Scotland Tierney to his right finds Hanley Ralston comes towards Hanley Hanley gives it to him and Scotland finally have to go all the way back 
to Gunn again. Gunn just outside his penalty area. Scotland's goalkeeper rolls it to Tierney. Switzerland players in the white shirts just start to close in and close the avenues. I'm OK with that because Scotland have now dragged them forward and we've got three against three up the field. But the ball's gone long and McGinn hasn't been able to make a challenge. No, so McGinn's going to chase now as it's come back to Jan Zoma. Blue shirts closing in around him. Three minutes of added time at the end of the first half. Rodriguez with a high spinning ball down the left. Vargas jumps here with Hendry and then barges into the back of Hendry and concedes the free kick. Scotland won, Switzerland won. A little bit of frustration there from Vargas there. I mean, no need to do that. It's just it's a deliberate bump. And Scotland will be delighted with that because if you get your back to the goal and you're a defender, you don't really want to be in that position. It's not comfortable. That's an easy free kick for Scotland. Free kick Scotland then, just inside their own half. We're in added time at the end of the first half. And the group table as it stands at the moment. Germany on six, Switzerland will be on four, Scotland will be on one, Hungary will be on none. Scotland play Hungary, final group game. Sunday night in Stuttgart, we'll be there. Full commentary on Five Live and BBC Sounds. It kicks off at nine o'clock. Hendry's high ball forward. Header one this time by McGinn. Only as far as Vidma. Vidma clears. Tierney wrestling with Undoy. Referee says they're both pulling at each other's shirts, so he's not going to give anything for that. Hanley into the feet of McGregor. Scotland building from deep. McGregor just gets it back from Gilmore. That lovely trusted left foot plays it low and wide to Robertson. Here's Tierney. Tierney across to Hanley. Very, very different Scotland performance from what we saw on Friday night in Munich. Uh, Ralston under a bit of pressure inside his own half. Abisha chasing hard, nudges him to the floor, free kick for Scotland. So noticeable we do Ralston all the time. Yeah. And the Germans did it, and now the Swiss are trying to do it. Almost allowing the ball to go out right there, and then ask him a question. But once again, under pressure, he managed to get out of it. So just over a minute to play at the end of the first half. Tierney to Hanley. Possession for the last five minutes has been all Scotland. Uh, Hendry's on the ball. Thirsty Scottish fans, I can see some have already done the beer run down there, actually, just in front of that two-tiered end away to our left-hand side. Arms full of pints of beer heading back to their seats as Akanji lets this ball drift over his head, brings it down on his right thigh. McTominay hoves into view, play back to Zoma. Zoma slices this one away, and Scotland win a throw in an attacking position on the right, right at the end of the first half. He's not been great a few times at that, Zoma. You know, expect a little bit better the top international goalkeepers under a little bit of pressure, but not a huge amount, and he just lashes it out and play. Uh, here's Tierney. Tierney inside his own half, finds Hanley. 30 seconds remaining in this first half. Hanley's going to go with a longer ball down the right. It's too far, and it's beyond Ralston, and out for the throw uh, to Switzerland. Uh, Linda Dykes, what have you made of, of the first half? It's been a solid performance. I think the boys have done very well. Obviously had that unfortunate goal. Um, against them, but that's what happens at this level. You give them half a sniff and they take it. But we should take confidence in the second half, um, controlling the game well, but maybe just trying to affect a little bit more going forward. There we go, perfect timing. As Lyndon finishes his sentence, the referee blows the half time whistle. So level pegging at half time in a game Scotland cannot afford to lose if they want to get out of the group stages at a major tournament for the first time in their history. Scott McTominay giving them the lead, Pat Nevin with the deflected strike. The equaliser is a goal of, of the highest quality from Shakiri, but Scotland gave him the chance to punish them. Yes, it was a gift. I mean, I, I don't think Shakiri's touched the ball any more than four or five times in this game. But you don't give them a one-on-one -one with the goalkeeper, even though it's still a hard finish, and, and we gave them that. It, was a, it wasn't even a back pass, it was just a no-look pass, it was straight into him. So, in this level, you give chances away, you lose it, but take nothing away from the attitude of the Scotland players tonight. I think they've been superb, they've been long periods of the game with Scotland, they've controlled it well, they've been brave getting on the ball. Clearly, Gilmore's made a massive difference, a gigantic difference, but also McTominay and McGinn pushing further up the park. They've not been able to make that much of an impression on the game, but they've lengthened it and they've pushed it up and they've allowed McGill Gilmore and McGregor to go on the ball. So, it looks much, much better. I mean, it couldn't have been any worse. But Scotland's 1-1, one, one. I think it's deserving of it. I don't think we deserve necessarily a whole lot more than that just now. This game is incredibly well balanced, and as you can tell, it could go either way. It's in the balance at half-time in Cologne, Scotland 1, Switzerland 1. Alistair Bruce Ball and Pat Nevin bringing you the commentary from Cologne. Charlie Adam, 
is also watching on as Scotland drawing one all at half time. What have you made of the first half, Charlie? Yeah, I think Scotland, listen, we, we, we deservedly went ahead. We started the game in the front foot, caused a few problems. What a wonder strike from Shakiri gets gets them back into the game. But just small margins in this. Lyndon was talking about it there. The small margins in the game. When McTominay's um, sort of playing as a false nine, we can see, and McGinn and Adams are playing on the outside centre backs. McGinn's going too early to the press. He has to wait a little bit longer, and if he waits, then it gives him an opportunity. When he goes too early, it's too easy to get picked off and that's the problem his enthusiasm is brilliant but when he goes too early he can get picked off and McTominay needs to start staying away from the game when we're trying to build up when McGregor and um, Gilmore go down to it for the build up McTominay keeps coming in the back he, he needs to stay away as long as he can because the, the ball will find him and play in little pockets where a Kanji won't jump to him and then that's where the, that's where the out ball is we have to realise that once we can break through McGregor or Gilmore, McTominay's free, and when he gets on a half turn, we need more runs forward. And I think if we do that second half, we'll cause the Swiss a lot of problems. Charlie, interesting that you picked up on, on John McGinn's role there, because in terms of getting involved in the game itself, he only completed three passes in the whole first 45 minutes. Yeah, and, and that's that's important because what will happen is because him and him and Adams are playing on the outside centre backs. Steve wants them stretching the game to then allow the space for McTominay to play on the back of Frulli, um to the back of Granite Xhaka when Xhaka presses. The space then appears there because, you know, if we do and everybody keeps coming to the ball, all, ultimately all it takes is one bad pass and, and you take um, uh, pressure uh, against the defence. So it's important that they lads stretch the game for Scotland. Um, like you say, with Robertson, that run he made and Akanji puts out for a corner. It's important that we have runs in the forward area to allow McGreg, um, to allow McTominay time and space to get on the half turn and drive with the ball. But when he does that, he's got to commit quicker and go and dominate and, and, and penetrate quicker as well, running forward. And as much as we, we can analyse that that first half, it just looks more like Scotland again, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. We, let's like say we've got structure, we've got an organisation, but again, we look like we're... We're, we're believing in what we're doing. We're not half and half. We're not ready. A couple of times, Ralston's in no man's land in terms of how when he presses, ultimately he makes a mistake. No problem. Everybody makes mistakes. You know you have to you have to recover from that. But I think I think Scotland will be happy in terms of that's more like us. We're showing a little bit more determined, a little mo more aggression, but also more belief in what we're trying to do. Charlie, for now, thank you very much. Charlie Adam is with us on Five Live Sport. We are live in Cologne. For Scotland against Switzerland, it's one all at half-time in that game. We will be back very shortly for second-half coverage of that. Plus, we'll round up the rest of the day's action in the Euros and we'll bring you the rest of the day's sports headlines after the BBC News with Lisa McCormick. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A police officer working as part of the Prime Minister's close protection team has been suspended and arrested over bets about the timing of the general election. The Met Police told the BBC it was contacted by the Gambling Commission last Friday. The officer has been questioned on suspicion of misconduct on public office and released on bail. The Chancellor Jeremy Hunt says he hopes the Bank of England can start cutting interest rates now that inflation has fallen to the Bank of England's target of 2% for the first time since July 2021. Labour and the Liberal Democrats say the cost of living remains high. Laura Soutis from the financial services company AJ Bell. So inflation falling doesn't mean prices falling. It just means they're rising by a more moderate amount than they were. And hitting back at this 2% target is a, a great achievement for the Bank of England, they will say. But we're not necessarily expecting it to stay at this level now and continue at 2% for the foreseeable. Prosecutors are to decide whether to seek a retrial for a couple accused of the manslaughter of the newborn baby by gross negligence after a jury at the Old Bailey failed to agree on verdicts. Constance Martin and Mark Gordon denied a total of five charges. And Wiltshire police say two climate activists have been arrested on suspicion of damage in Stonehenge after orange paint was sprayed on the monument. Just Stop Oil say the paint was orange corn flour and will wash away in the rain. You don't need us to tell you there's a general election coming. So what does it mean for you? Every day on Newscast, we dissect the big talking points, the ones that you want to know more about. With our book of contacts, we talk directly to the people you want to hear from. And with help from some of the best BBC journalists, we'll untangle the stories that matter to you. 
Join me, Laura Kunzberg, Adam Fleming, Chris Mason and Paddy O'Connell for our daily podcast. Newscast. Listen on BBC Science. Euro 2024 Deutschland. With Kelly Kitts. On Five Live and BBC Sounds. Welcome back to Cologne, where we're watching Scotland against Switzerland. One all at half time, second half coming up. Earlier today in Scotland and Switzerland's group, Jamal Musiala scored again as Germany continued their winning start to Euro 2024 with a win over Hungary. They are the first side through to the knockout stages. In Group B, it finished Croatia 2, Albania 2, and Albania's equaliser came in stoppage time. It means that Croatia, the World Cup semi-finalists, have just one point from two matches. We've got commentary of England's second Euro group match against Denmark from 5 o'clock tomorrow on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. England could qualify for the last 16 with a game to spare if they win in Frankfurt tomorrow. Correspondent John Murray has been speaking to England manager Gareth Southgate and John's with us now. So, John... What does he say? Is he, is he hinting at any changes from the side that won against Serbia on Sunday? Yes, I've just got back from the uh, the stadium where we were able to talk to Gareth Southgate and Kyle Walker. Actually, he, uh, have a listen out for that in the morning because Connor Cody, who's just joined up with us today, so he's going to be with us out here with the BBC team for the next week or so. It was actually Connor who did the interview with Kyle Walker, so that, that'll be on the Football Daily in the morning and I'm sure you'll hear bits of that so uh, the, the, that's quite good fun I have to say but first and foremost who's going to be involved tomorrow well we've got the news from Gareth Southgate that Luke Shaw will not be involved so the, uh, the this recovery that he's been going through from uh, a hamstring problem um, he says now Gareth Southgate that Luke Shaw is on track for where we thought originally to quote him directly so Luke Shaw has gone from being a long shot to maybe able to play in the second group match, this one against Denmark, to the other day possibly being able to play some part in the first match against Serbia, but now there's clearly been a setback and he will not be involved tomorrow and the indications are that uh, it would be the knockout stages at the earliest. Um, Just to make it clear what the permutations are for England here, um, if they're able to win against Denmark, then they would secure qualification to the round of 16. And it is possible that if things were to go their way tomorrow, England could actually seal the top spot in the group if Slovenia were unable earlier match and England won against Denmark, that would be the case. Um, but, but more generally, um, going on from the uh, performance against Serbia the other night, I was interested to know from Gareth Southgate, you know, what work has been done about how they play out of possession of the ball because that's been an issue for England and that's from Gareth Southgate himself and this was his response to that. Well, I think there are some things we have definitely highlighted and can highlight that can help us structurally. Um, But then, you know, there are decisions made on the pitch and uh, passes that are given away that are maybe the occasion, maybe the intensity of it all, the emotion. Um, So I think... Everybody will be better for having had a game, having got that first game, which is, you know, such enormous pressure. Uh, I don't think people really realise what what that is like for the players. So, to come through it with a win, a performance that at the start was excellent, really, really good, definitely faded. Um, but you know they had the spirit and and the defensive now to get through the game. We can build from that now. As a result, off the back of that, are you minded to to make changes? Well, that's that's you know what we've got to decide whether we give confidence to the group and stick with the route we've been going, or whether we would benefit from some freshness and um, you know a couple of others because you know there are players that are training very well. So I've, I've got to be mindful of not only the team that's starting, but the group that are pushing uh, for places and, and showing themselves well in training. Yeah. And it can qu- happen quite quickly now, can't it, against Denmark? You know very well that if you win, you'll be qualified, quite possibly as group winners. Yeah, well, that's the objective. Um, you know, first objective is always to qualify from the group. The win in the first game puts you in a strong position, but there's still a lot to do. And, um, you know, we play a team tomorrow that have a good pedigree, well organised, have some good players that, you know, a lot of whom play in in the Premier League. So um, we know how tough that's going to be. 
Uh, that was Gareth Southgate talking to John Murray. John, obviously we're wearing Cologne at the moment, watching Scotland against Switzerland, while Scotland are trying to, to recover from that opening day 5-1 defeat by Germany. For England, they've got that pressure off them after that. You know, it wasn't a spectacular win, but it was a solid win against Serbia. Yeah, I think um, he's kept us guessing there. Gareth Southgate in terms of whether whether he's going to make changes or not you know the message there was very much that that there are decisions to be made um, so he's keeping us guessing he's keeping Denmark guessing and the fact is that you know they are well aware of what's been said about Phil Foden's position and how he contributes to the team and whether they're able to get the best out of him and and he's going to keep us waiting until tomorrow to find out if he's going to get another opportunity Phil Foden. John, for now, thank you very much. John Murray bringing us the very latest from the England camp there. And we'll get the latest now from the T20 World Cup. We've got ball-by-ball -ball commentary of England's opening Super 8s match against the West Indies. That's 1.30 a.m. on 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. Test match specials Henry Moran is in St Lucia for us because somebody has to be. But Henry, it looks like a <laughs> fascinating matchup. No, it's going to be great, though, isn't it? It's the reigning champions against the co-hosts. It's going to be wonderful, yeah, and just to make you even more jealous, the sun is shining, it's been a glorious day, around about 30 degrees here, uh, and England almost reset now in, the, in this second part of the tournament. They squeak through the group stages, went to the Super 8, and it all gets a little more serious now. West Indies, South Africa, then the USA in their group, and against the West Indies, they're playing one of the great sides uh, in T20 cricket at the moment. They've won their last nine West Indies, and uh, if the number of people around this island asking me if I know where to get tickets is anything to go by. It's going to be pretty hostile, this, for England as well. There's illness in the England camp as well, isn't there? How much of an issue is, is that potentially going to cause? Well, I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem. Chris Jordan and Liam Livingston both missed training yesterday with a bug, but I understand this hasn't either spread or got worse for those two. And you'd imagine it had to be something pretty serious uh, to rule anyone out. Speaking of Livingston uh, and injury concerns, well, he limped off against Namibia, and there was a, a lot of worries at the back complaint, the side complaint, uh, could, uh, could have put some jeopardy for his tournament, but uh, apparently that has healed up. The big selection question is whether Will Jacks comes back into the side to bat at three, or whether England will keep Sam Curry in the side so there's a few things up in the air that we'll, that we'll have to wait for the toss to find out new, uh, the news on Henry team's coming out here in Cologne so I'm going to say thank you very much and just to make you jealous it's about 18 degrees and slightly drizzly and overcast here in, in Cologne but <laughs> you know you can't have everything I suppose in St Lucia thank you very much though Henry uh, and Henry and the team on air from a quarter past one tomorrow morning on Five Sports Extra and BBC Sounds. There was one match played earlier in England's group. South Africa held off a late charge from the USA to win by 18 runs in Antigua. By the way, Andy Murray, who'll be concentrating on Scotland at the moment, says he hopes some rest and treatment will enable him to play at Wimbledon next month. He had to retire injured from his second round match at Queen's earlier this evening. And the favourite, uh, the favourite August Rodan, trained by Aidan O'Brien and ridden by Ryan Moore, won the big race on day two of Royal Ask at the Prince of Wales Estates. We're in Cologne, though, for the second half of Scotland against Switzerland. It's one all. We're ready to kick off with Pat Nevin and Alistair Bruce Ball. Nerves jangling for the Scotland fans in particular. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Switzerland already with a win in this group in the opening game against Hungary. Scotland well beaten by Germany. Have to get something out of this game to give themselves any real chance of getting out of Group A, Germany already through to the last 16. Two wins out of two, they beat Hungary by two goals to nil earlier on today. No changes made for either team at half-time. Dan and Doy sprinting away down the right for Switzerland. They're all in white, playing from left to right in this second half. Scotland in the dark, blue shirts, dark blue shorts and socks. Yellow trim on that kit. And Callum McGregor's trying to close down Sylvain Vidmer. Switzerland have won an early corner in this second half. Yeah, going down the right-hand side there, right-hand side, Scotland's left, where Scotland is supposed to be stronger, but most of their play has gone down there. Interesting seeing Doyle, you know, sprinting against Kieran Tierney a few times. Tierney has done him for pace. Jordan Shakiri, Switzerland's goal scorer supreme, with the corner, left-footed delivery. Headed away by McTominay, only as far as Ruben Vargas. Vargas's cross. 
blocked by a leaping Callum McGregor and behind it goes for another Switzerland corner. So Switzerland on the front foot early in the second half and actually what makes this even more fun in the second half, if you can call it fun, is both teams attacking the goals where the majority of their fans are situated behind, which just adds a little something to it as well. Short corner. Uh, there's Shakiri's cross in. This one is headed high in the air by Hendry. Goes behind, would have been another corner, but an offside flag has gone up. So Scotland have a free kick. So, Angus Gunning goal for Scotland. Hendry, Hanley, Tierney, the three centre-backs. Ralston and Roberts in the wing-backs. Gilmore, McGregor, McTominay, McGinn and Shea Adams. The 11 men out there in the dark blue shirts representing their country on the biggest stage of all. Hanley's ball forward with the right foot, headed away by Rodriguez for Switzerland and throw in for Scotland on the right. So they've just dealt with that early bit of Swiss pressure in this second half, Pat Nevin. Yeah, Swiss trying to do to Scotland what Scotland did to them, you know, took them under that pressure from the, the kick-off when you've got possession of the ball. What is noticeable, quite often happens is Ralston with Scotland are on the ball breaking. Mm. Ralston goes really long and really wide, but never gets it. And you just think once or twice, we have to give him something to pin his ears back and run at uh, but so often he gets there and the ball doesn't arrive for him to chase it. Mentally tough for him as well, I think, Pat, having made the mistake. It was his pass that let Shakiri in and the, the finish. I mean, you know, Shakiri. It's, like it's not a one in a million shot. It was still a really tough one to stick in the top corner, which he did. But that's that's going to have to have rocked Ralston a bit. Oddly enough, his reactions to all the things that happened in the game against Germany makes me think he'll be fine. He'll just keep on playing his game. Yeah. Uh, Tierney into McGinn, McGinn is trying to turn Fabian Scher, Scher's got a hold of his shoulder, drags him to the floor, free kick for Scotland. That is what John McGinn is brilliant at, and he's won a free kick in a great position here for Steve Clark's team. Yeah, uh, I mean, you don't always have to describe it, you can just say John McGinn's is back to the goal, and you know what's happening. Yeah. And he's just waiting for some sort of drag, and there is a pull, there is, he's, he's got a hold of uh, McGinn's arm, and he knows what he's doing there. But you, you need to stand off him. And that's our situation. McGinn knows if you get close, he'll either get round you or get a foul. Scotland centre forward Lyndon Dykes back with us for the second half as well, so we'll get thoughts from Lyndon uh, in a moment. Let's see what Scotland can do with the free kick though. Two tiers packed with Scottish fans behind this goal. Tierney's curling ball easily headed away. There's Robertson. Robertson plays it back to Tierney, and Tierney comes all the way back to Angus Gunn. So they couldn't quite make the most of that position. Gunn. Takes one touch and then drives the ball high in the air. There's a little streak of orange sunset up in the sky this evening as Robertson nods the ball down. Was he dragged down by Froehler there? No, the referee says that's a dive. And Froehler's actually saying he's dived. He should be booked for that. The ball has gone out for a Scotland throw on the left. The referee's done all right, actually, today. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think he's spotted when people are throwing themselves to the ground too easily. Um, he's not getting overcarried away with it. He's allowed the game to flow a little bit. So, so far, so good for the referee, but... Scotland back into it now, getting in good positions and a chance for Tierney. A long throw into that box. Cameraman close to him, to Kieran Tierney. Three steps to the touchline, puts everything into that. Throw into the near post. Kanji heads away for Switzerland. Hanley heads it up in the air, back into the Swiss area. Nodded away, Tierney prodded forward to Robertson. Another clearance from Shera. Kanji jumps off balance, he's fallen heavily. Play continues, Kanji is still down. It's not a head injury, but the referee does decide to stop the game, I don't think there was any need for that, he fell awkwardly, he looked strictly meant to stop the game, unless he did think that was a head injury anyway, we've got a stoppage in play, Scotland 1, Switzerland 1. So first question to uh, to Lyndon in this second half, Lyndon, you have played against John McGinn in training, how difficult is it to get the ball off him in that sort of situation? Yeah, that's a difficult place to be as a defender, he uses his body very well, he knows exactly what he was doing, um, and that's what we need to be trying to do a bit more. I think getting him on the ball, using his body, and getting fouls when we need it. Scott McTominay's just been booked. Well, he's, I'll tell you, furious for the fact that that play was allowed to play on. It's not a head injury. And Scotland had played a beautiful little dink ball into the 18 yard line. Obviously, they've got a Kanji Downs injured at that point. So yeah. Scotland won a great position, and the referee stopped the play, and that's why. Tom is absolutely fuming about it, but he's got a yellow card, he's just pushed it too far. Five and a half minutes gone in the second half. Scotland won, Switzerland won. England back in action tomorrow here at Euro 2024. Hanley's ball, high diagonal to the right. Ralston can't win that, and it goes behind for a goal kick. So your three commentaries 
on Five Live and BBC Sounds tomorrow. Two o'clock, Group C, Slovenia against Serbia. That's in England's group. Lee Blakeman and Stephen Warnock with that one. Five o'clock is England against Denmark. Christian Eriksen, Pat and I watched him pulling the strings in the draw against Slovenia in fabulous form. Now that game kicks off at five. Commentary with John Murray, Matt Upson, Connor Cody. Uh, part of the team, the Five Live team for the coverage of that one. You can hear him in the Football Daily podcast tomorrow morning, available on the BBC Sounds uh, app, along with Kyle Walker as well. I think Connor Cody will also feature on the breakfast show tomorrow morning. Rick Edwards and the team out here every morning bringing you all the news and everything you need to know from the Euro. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Scotland fans will be wanting to nurse happy hangovers tomorrow morning. At the moment, it's going OK, 1-1 which is enough to keep them in with a shout of getting out of this group. Win against Hungary in the final game, if it was a point here, may well do the job. Robertson on the charge, tries to get the cross in, Vidma blocks, and it goes out for a Scotland throw. Attacking position on the left. Robertson takes it quickly, bounces three times and rolls to the feet of Tierney. McGregor's out, wide left for him. Back to Tierney, and in turn, they come back to Hanley. Yeah, but once again, McTominay held the ball up brilliantly just a few moments ago. Oh, nearly caught in possession sure. there, Scotland. He don't need to be doing that as we're the last man. Heart and mouth time. That was Vargas blocking Hendry's ball forward. Ralston in with the challenge. It's gone out for a Swiss throw on the left. Just a reminder of this Swiss team as well. Jan Zommer in goal into Milan's goalkeeper. Cher Akanji Rodriguez. Rodriguez, the left-sided centre-back, uh, is on a yellow card, so we'll keep an eye on that. Vidmer and Abisher, right and left. Freuler and Xhaka, the two men in the middle. And Doyen Vargas in support. Jordan Shakiri. Uh, the goal scorer who's joined a very exclusive list of European footballers tonight with his 10th goal uh, in major international tournaments. The only player I read as well on social media at halftime that has scored in the last three Euros and the last three World Cups. Whatever you think about Sherm Shakiri, that is. No, he's a, he's, he's a superb player, but I mean, he, he doesn't move a huge amount, he doesn't need to. Yeah. And then again, Near the end of his career, Murray. Messi didn't move a lot, and it didn't seem to make any difference, did it? Eight minutes gone, second half. Tense night now. Freuler leaves the ball for Vidmer to take the throw. Vidmer throws back to Cher. Cher plays it to Akanji. Akanji just waits here. Then left-footed ball, he bobbles it away to the right-hand side. Vidmer's first-time pass nearly went out of play. Cher whacks it forward. Freuler to Ndoy, nice first touch from him, first time pass to Shakiri. Lays it off to Freuler again on the right. Scotland back in their defensive positions and just march Switzerland back into their own half. So five o'clock tomorrow is Denmark, England. Eight o'clock tomorrow night, don't miss that one either. Uh, Ian Dennis and Chris Sutton will bring you full commentary of Spain against Italy uh, in Group B. Should be an absolute cracker. Chris will be taking the calls tonight as well on 6.06 alongside Robbie Savage after this game. Header infield from Robertson inside his own half. Hendry takes a touch, takes great care to get the ball back to Angus Gunn. No one wants to make a mistake right now. In the balance of the game and Scotland's fortunes here at Euro 2024. Yeah, so finely balanced at the moment. I don't think either team's in top right at this second. But I don't think the Swiss want to take any chances. Remember, they run four points as yeah. we speak. They're through, as we speak. They don't have to overdo it. Uh, here's Xhaka. Xhaka trying to thread one through for Ndoy. Ndoy runs into the back of Hendry. Hendry got a touch on the ball. Referee's not going to give the free kick, and Scotland tried to prevent it going out for a corner. It's come off the corner flag from Ralston's clearance on the slide, and that will be uh, a Swiss corner, 1-1. Yeah, Scotland thought that was a, a little bit of push, a little bit of nudge. How often that happens, you think you should have got a free kick, you don't get one corner kick against. Hope. Nothing untoward happens here for Scotland. Scotland have got a switch on. Runners in the middle. Corner's taken short to Shakiri. Plays it back to the corner of the box. Now that cross comes in. Headed away by Hanley. Straight down the middle of the pitch. Controlled by Xhaka. Good run being made by Vargas in behind the Scotland defence. But Xhaka went sideways to Rodriguez. Wide it goes to Shakiri. Back to uh, Ricardo Rodriguez. Now plays his club football at Torino, former AC Milan man, one of the centurions in this Swiss team, along with Shakiri and Xhaka. Ball played forward into midfield for Xhaka, bit of space for him to work with, lovely ball to the right-hand side, to Fabian Scher in the attack, cross took a slight deflection, goes deep, away to the left-hand side of the box, shot comes in, straight at Angus Gunn, and comfortably saved from the right foot of Vargas. Yeah, it's gone straight to him, but it's come through a lot of bodies there. 
bouncing, bobbling, and he's kept an eye on it. And, you know, he stayed down a lot of it there, and I think that's because he feels quite comfortable. That he's got it clean. He's coming across a few players. A lot of players, goalkeepers have just flicked out. By the way, what about that noise? Yeah, Scott. <laughs> well, that's right, but that, that is, that's Flower of Scotland. I think the Scotland fans have sensed that their team need them right at this moment. Swiss fans try to respond with a thunderclap away to our right in that bright cherry red. Couldn't hear that at all. Scottish fans singing loud and proud here in Cologne. 11 minutes gone in the second half. Still 1-1. One, one. Another chorus strikes up at the national anthem and it's out for a throw into Scotland on the right. Oddly enough, it was a piper that started that. And remember, you're not supposed to be able to bring um, musical instruments into football matches. You need special dispensation. But apparently, the pipes have got them. Ah. Here's McGregor, back to Hanley, Scotland on the ball inside their own half. Swiss manager Murat Yaki, who's got the, uh, the Hollywood looks, tall man as Tierney plays back to Gunn. Gunn controls the ball well, but Tierney was shoved over there by Undoy. So that will be a free kick to Scotland in their left-back position inside their own half. He's got long hair, Murat Yakin. Graying, but but dark at the back. He's got a bit of Mads Mikkelsen about him. I don't know if you know Mads Mikkelsen, yeah. the Danish actor who played Le Sheep in Casino Royale. I think he looks a bit like him. He's not a bad looking lad. You know, I'll grant you that. And he's got the sort of uh, giant Clark Kent glasses from the early Superman films that Christopher Reeve wore as well. But he carries them off extremely well. McGinn on the turn, wide on the left hand side, and he's won a throw in for Scotland but you're absolutely right that's why Scotland fans started singing there and get behind them because it was a six seven minute yeah you know period there they couldn't go on the ball weren't be able to control any part of the midfield a little bit of tactical change there from the Swiss Scotland haven't really reacted to it yet not getting any concept of on the ball and getting forward oh and Doy has turned well edge of the box chance for Switzerland he's shot wide Gunn came out quickly to narrow down the angle and the Scotland defender is it Tierney's in trouble yeah. down on the floor and I think that's the end of his game yeah, Tierney's been injured enough times in his career you know when it's got a bad one and he's, uh, his hamstring's Hamstring. absolutely gone there ah it's a massive blow for Scotland another one I mean good news for them that ball didn't end up in the back of the net and Doy's turn on the edge of the box Gunn was so quickly off his line Lyndon Dykes to lose Kieran here to lose Kieran Tierney will be a, a big blow yeah, not looking well for Kieran. Hopefully he's all right there, but I think that actually comes off Gunny. It's a great save from the keeper there. Um, but yeah, Kieran's looking in a bit of a trouble here. Um, hopefully he's all right. But yeah, it doesn't look good. No, it doesn't look good at the moment. And Scotland have had injury problems at the back. Obviously they're missing Lyndon up front. Uh, but Aaron Hickey, Nathan Patterson both missing in the right back uh, position. Kieran Tierney is down injured. The stretcher is coming on. A couple of the players there, Lyndon, have gone over and had a word with the manager, Steve Clark. It's an obvious time to do it. Uh, in terms of in-game management from Steve, what, what's, what's he like? I mean, he probably can't hear too much, actually, during the game. It's only in these breaks where you could go over and get a little bit of, of tactical information. What's he like? Yeah, I mean, you can see him speaking to John Carver there. They'll be thinking about what's, what's the plan going forward here. Obviously, Kieran is coming off... So they're going to be making plans, what they want to do, how they want to change it. Um, obviously, it's going to be interesting to see because it's been quite a, a battle between Ndoy and Kieran at the, in the back there. And obviously, Tierney's got the pace to keep up with him. And, oh, you can see at the yeah. end there, he um, definitely does something. Yeah, his foot sort of jars into the turf as he chases I with Ndoy. It, I think it gone just before the jar. Right. Yeah. I think it had. And that's why it jarred, because he had to straighten out his foot. Yeah, and it looks like he may have actually kind of hyper-extended his knee there when he's yeah. after, like you said, and then obviously... Uh, well, hopefully it's not too bad yeah. and Kieran's all right. Yeah, he's a player who's had a few injury problems, didn't manage a full season last season on loan to Real Sociedad from Arsenal. Absolutely crucial to Scotland, though, and a very sad sight to see him being taken off uh, on a stretcher here in this second half Scotland 1, Switzerland 1 so Scott McKenna will come on Pat and play in that left-sided centre-back position yeah I've got three centre-backs anyway but the thing about Kieran he gave you that pace he was covering really well he was reading the play I just mentioned earlier on his pace looked as good as it has done at any point in his career a few times in Doyle tried to go up and he just was getting no change whatsoever so just when he's looking at his best again Kieran He's just had the most terrible luck with injuries yeah. through his whole career. He's, he's 
as you'd expect, but down below us now, disappearing down the tunnel, and we cannot see his face, his hands are covering his face, and you know he will be absolutely devastated for that to have happened right here in a game as important as this one. Scotland have got to keep fighting, half an hour to play, still very much involved in Euro 2024. Scotland won, Switzerland won. A point here tonight is no bad thing. Last game against Hungary, if they could win that one in Stuttgart, four points would what a well big, be enough, should be enough. Yeah, well, big, big difference to the game now. Shakira coming off, he's not really going, wasn't going beyond team threat. He's only sprint by you, you bring him ball on now. Yes. That changes everything now. Scotland got a lot of other worries and concerns now. But then again, you've got three centre-backs on us. There's a little bit more power if you get a free kick or a corner to attack. Yeah, Breland Bolo came on in the first game against Hungary and scored a goal. He's one actually a bit like Tini, who's had a load of injury problems as well. Only came back towards the end of the season for Monaco. But uh, yes, offers a very different threat through the middle for Switzerland. So, Scotland won, Switzerland won. Five live and BBC Sounds. Don't forget to subscribe and listen to the Football Daily podcast on Sounds throughout the Euros. Debate and reaction, plus the interviews from inside the England and Scotland camps. Uh, here is Mbolo, rolls the pass to Freuler. His ball down the right-hand touchline is cut out by Andy Robertson, and it goes out for a throw to Switzerland. I wonder if it crossed Stevie Clark's mind just for a moment. You know, don't bring on a centre-half, just say Robo, right, left-back, not left-wing back, just look, go to four. I think that may happen as the game goes on, and certainly Scotland lost the goal, we would be tempted to do that. Lidmer's ball forward, McKenna gets a first touch, an important one to make an interception, Gilmore plays it back to Hendry, Hendry takes his time to release the pass, Ralston under pressure, Vargas blocks that pass down the right, Scotland get a throw. Never gets a second, Ralston, does he? Every time the yeah. ball's played to him throughout this competition, he's got a player right beside him, giving him no space at all. Angus Gunn gives the ball a good clatter with his right foot for Scotland. Headed forward by Rodriguez, headed away by Hanley and out for another throw to Switzerland uh, on the left. Haven't been many draws in the tournament so far. 14 games played, we saw Slovenia 1, Denmark 1, Croatia 2, Albania 2 with a late Albania equaliser today. This one is level begging at the moment. Long ball from Cher, launched into the night sky. Fantastic diagonal ball as well. We see Switzerland attacking down the left-hand side. Double step over here, shot! Goes flashing across the Scotland goal. And behind for the goal kick, it was Vargas again. Really surprised at that point in time. Ralston's going out there, but he's so isolated. One of the three centre-backs, the right-hand side one's going to have to go and give him a lot of that help. And again, again, isolated, and I'm thinking of as a wide player, a winger, a wide attacking player. That's what you want. You want to isolate the fullback, And I think he's feeling the pace a wee bit. Anthony Rawson just pulling his leg there, we better cramp. Noise inside the stadium is absolutely unrelenting. Angus Gunn, Scotland's goalkeeper, really important save from him actually in the first half from Dan and Doy. Sharp chance, got down well to his left to palm it behind for the corner. Here is Doy. plays it to Vidma. Vidma's inside his own half for Switzerland. McGregor comes across to cover the danger for Scotland. Wide it comes to Vidma again, Robertson. Up there as well, putting the pressure on. Scotland go chasing this ball inside the Swiss half. McGregor intercepts the ball forward with a header. It falls to Gilmore. Chests it down, brings it forward. Gilmore unleashes the shot. It hits a Kanji's back and spins away for a throw to Scotland. Well, he doesn't score many goals, Billy Gilmore, there, but he didn't think twice there, did he? Caught it very well and it's hammering towards the goal. Never scored in his club career. Has won for Scotland uh, at the end of last year in the friendly defeat against France. The ball is nicked out of play by Vargas for another Scotland throw on the right-hand side. 1-1, one, one. it really does... I mean, we've been saying it, it really does feel this could go either way, doesn't it? It absolutely it really could. Does. I mean, at this point in time, well, we'll wait for a moment. To oh, clear. McTominay caught, edge of the penalty area, Akanji was right behind him, McTominay turned, Akanji blocked him, and Scotland have a free kick wide on the right. It was actually before I could get the words out. We need a little bit more from Scott. And John McGinn in the second half, it again struggling to get on the ball, but when it's come up there, he's held it well. And that is really clever. Rolled the defender, and he's only about half a foot outside the, the penalty box. So we're never going to get a penalty for that one, Scotland. However, it is a free kick in a good position. Key moment in the game here, and the free kick is is just outside the penalty area. McTominay stands over the ball. Uh, it's it's just slightly further out than the, the length of the penalty spot. McTominay's moved away now, 
which means there's an added threat inside the penalty box for Scotland to attack the set piece. And Andy Robertson, the skipper, is going to take the free kick. Can they get themselves ahead again in front of those thousands of Scotland fans desperate for this ball to end up in the back of the net? Robertson takes his time over the delivery, waits for the referee's whistle. Six, seven, dark blue Scottish shirts inside the penalty area. Robertson's delivery, in it comes. Oh, it's headed against the post. Ball's loose, pinging around, and Sommer is able to clear it away. So near, but yet so far for Scotland. Grant Hanley, was it, with the header that struck the base of the post? He met it so well. Just a couple of inches to the right in the back of the net. Yeah, I mean... It's a brilliant ball oh. in there. It was zipped in there. It was headed perfectly. We were never stopping that. It could have bounced out to anyone at all, but it just didn't get to a blue shot that we could get on to the end of it. That is the closest we've come to a goal, apart from the two goals that have been scored, and it's been Scotland. Coming up to 22 minutes played, second half. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Again, Scotland cannot afford to lose, but a win would put them in a really strong position going into the final group game against Hungary. Ralston goes sliding in inside the Swiss half. Half wins the ball. Played back, though, by Switzerland to Rodriguez. McTominay's got the bit between his teeth. Closes it down as Sommer clears up to the halfway line. Hanley chests it down. Good moments, these, for Scotland. McGregor, pass forward, is intercepted. Now, this could be dangerous for Scotland. Gilmore's got to try and stop this. As Cher brings it forward, Mbolo went down off the ball. The referee spotted it. And that is going to be the free kick for Switzerland and a yellow card for Scott McKenna. Uh, Lyndon Dykes, just to go back to the Scotland set pieces, we were obviously mentioning him in the first game as well, Austin McPhee plays a, a massive part in those, doesn't he, for Scotland? Yeah, it's something that we work on quite a lot, and Big Granny is so unfortunate there. It's, I've got Granny all day long, when the ball's coming into him, you see the size of him, the strength of him, I think it's Cher up against him, he just bullies him off there, and just so unfortunate, even the rebounds, just to go anywhere. Um, Swiss got lucky there, I think. Yeah, they did. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Granite Xhaka, low pass out to the left-hand side. Vargas thinks about a little trick to beat Ralston, plays it back to Rodriguez. He, in turn, returns it to Vargas. Rodriguez again, back to Vargas, trying to work the space on the left-hand side. Strong challenge comes in, which wins the ball from Ralston. Great Vargas. moment, by the way, for Ralston. Brilliant moment for him, because it's, just, it's a 50-50 there, and he's... He wants to make a statement. I keep on saying it. Look, he's going to get some stick from Lockfield because it was his pass that left to the Shikiri goal, and he's been put under a lot of pressure. He has never bowed for a second mm. in this game, and that's a great moment for him. Right, here comes Switzerland again. Mbolo, just outside the Scotland penalty area on the left, worked to wide left, looking for Mbolo again. Hendry's got this covered. Clears off balance, tumbling back towards the byline. Shea Adams did brilliantly for Scotland there to win that ball, hold on to it. Unfortunately, the next pass has been knocked out of play. Throwing for Switzerland on the left. We just wonder about uh, some of the players that are getting a little bit tired now. John McGinn's getting a wee bit tired, and he's such a talisman for the team as well. But we've got players like Christie there and Armstrong you can bring on, it might be a temptation. Oh, here comes John McGinn, sensed an opportunity to get onto the ball, has it for Scotland inside the Swiss half, plays it infield to Robertson, lovely first touch from Gilmore, that wasn't easy to control, slides his pass to the right-hand side, Ralston looking to get the cross in, blocked, and behind for a Scotland corner. Good game this at the moment. Better, much better, just lifted a little bit, oddly enough, it's from when the Scotland fans started singing, Yeah, they've just lifted it a little bit, and we do say it, it sounds like a cliche, we need the fans. Well, the players have reacted to it, it's been brilliant. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Lines open for 6.06. Number to dial 08085 909 693. Chris Sutton and Robbie Savage want to take your calls after this game. Are the Scotland fans going to be celebrating a famous Scotland win? Corner for them. Robertson's delivery into the near post. Volleyed away by Froiler. Ralston will chase against Embolo. Ralston on the half volley. Gets plenty on it. Knocks it straight out of play for a throw into Switzerland in their left back position. A wee bit disappointing in the, the corner. We, we mentioned the fact that Tierney's going off, but McKenna's come on. We've got an extra we've got a really tall lad there, and uh, well, I've got a centre forward to my left who was probably thinking, get it in, <laughs> you can mm. attack it, you want to attack it. Throw in then for Switzerland from deep. Rodriguez launches that into the middle of the field. McGinn senses a chance to win it again. Beats Froiler to the ball, it runs away to the right. Oh, McGinn's looking for another one. Cher was there first, cleared. McGinn, his momentum sort of took him into Cher, but he didn't really barge into him. And McGinn 
is going to get booked here, but he's gone down on the floor in mock disgust, hands over his face. He cannot believe he's getting a yellow card for that. What do you reckon, Lyndon Dykes? Yeah, I think it was unfortunate. You can't really stop. He's put his leg out, um, and it's unfortunate there, I think. McGinn's... You can't stop in that in that moment, momentum that he's running in with. Um, you can see why he's gave the yellow card, maybe. Yeah. But... It's either 50-50. He's yeah. going to give a yellow, he's not going to give a yellow. Well, McGinn and... Fabian Scher, there was just a little bit of afters there between the Villa man and the Newcastle man and Fabian Scher has been marched back a few yards by the referee to take the free kick possibly slightly rattled, he's sliced it out of play for a throw into Scotland in the left back position, Pat we're into the last 20 minutes of a crunch game for Scotland here. It kind of has them by the second half hasn't it, I have to say when Scotland were one up, it was, it was dragging by from there, we almost wanted to but get the end there but because it's been a good game in the second half not a huge amount of chances but the tension's been good, you know, there have been good passing movements from Scotland of, you know, under the course for 10 minutes, but then come right back into it at all. And of course it all helps when you get this fabulous atmosphere in here. You just feel there is a twist. Yeah. At least one twist and time to go yet. Yeah. And Scotland fans of course desperately hoping that it goes their way this time. Six wins in their history at major international tournaments. They beat Zaire in 74, the Netherlands famously in 78, New Zealand at the World Cup in 82, Sweden in 1990. Pat was on the pitch when they beat the uh, CIS, formerly the Soviet Union, in 1992. And the last one, Ali McCoyce, 25-yard screamer at Villa Park at Euro 96 against this nation, Switzerland. Scotland won, Switzerland won. John McGinn is loving the battle out there. He's won Scotland a free kick. He's just making it really awkward to defend against him, and Vidmer is penalised this time. I don't think Vidmer's very pleased. We only got a little bit of tap in the, on the chest there from John McGinn, as if to say, yeah, I fell for that one again. <laughs> right. It's so hard to play against. Free kick, Scotland. This one comes... A good 40 yards from goal, Austin McPhee steps out, very recognisable with the long hair, bouncing off the shoulders, had a word with Robertson, Robertson's delivery, comes in, the header is high, and over the bar from McKenna and goes behind for the Switzerland goal kick. 17 minutes plus added time remaining, 1-1. Yeah, a couple of changes come up from the Swiss there, which almost tells you, you know, there is a bit of time that's coming in the Swiss team as well. Uh, obviously they'd like to win the game, but the question whether they really are going to go out all out and take chances or just try and see it out Fab we'll see. yeah Fabian Rida uh, will be coming on but first it is Vincent Sierro central midfielder who plays for Toulouse he will replace Remo Freuler uh, in Switzerland's central midfield and Fabian Rida is the 22 year old who people might remember playing for young boys against Manchester United in the Champions League a few years ago and scoring at Old Trafford in a one-all draw. Foyles, it's Vargas who's coming off first here. Beg your pardon. So Vargas is replaced. Fabian Rida uh, comes on for him. And Sierra on the field as well. And we've got a team meeting from some of the Swiss players. Granit Xhaka just calling uh, Fabian Scher, Jan Sommer, Manuel Akanji together there, having a quick word before the Switzerland goal kick. 15 dramatic minutes or more on the way here. Five live in BBC Sounds. Huge 15 minutes or so for Scotland and their hopes here at Euro 2024. Xhaka on the ball in central midfield. Holds off Adams. Brilliant interception by McKenna. McGinn. McKenna continues the run. Scotland have won a corner. Left footed cross blocked by Xhaka. And listen to that noise once more. Well, that's because Scotland are going into their fans down there. They're getting more and more excited. The last five or ten minutes, much, much better for the Scots. Camping down there beside the supporters. But this time, the cross, that has to beat the first defender. So that those big lads can go and attack it. Hanley's almost scored already. Given something to go for. And Scotland find themselves a magic moment. McTominay's delivery towards Adams, hooks it back into the penalty area, attacked by Gilmore, jumps up, goes down, holding his face. Referee had a good view of that. Gilmore's down. Referee happy for this to continue. McTominay plays it back to McGregor. McGregor a little isolated on the left-hand side, tackled by Ndoy, and Gilmore's back on his feet. It's going to be a throw-in for Scotland. Oh, it was a hard one. It was a tough one, he took. Um... But certainly he's got up again. He's not. He's not badly injured, so he's 
Golf again. The teammate telling them, get on, get up. We want the momentum to keep going here. 15 minutes remaining in the game. Scotland won, Switzerland won. McGinn on the turn, looking to try and win a corner. Knocked it into the legs of the defender. It didn't go behind. There's a foul there by McKenna on Breland Bolo, who knew what he was doing as the centre forward. Frustration for Scotland. Free kick for Switzerland. Germany already threw in the group. They beat Hungary by two goals to nil. If this is a draw, Switzerland will be on four points and Scotland will be on one point. Switzerland have to play Germany. Scotland play Hungary in the final group games on Sunday. Don't miss that commentary on Scotland against Hungary from Stuttgart live on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. But obviously we'll keep you updated on everything going on in the other game uh, as well. Akanji. Plays Xhaka possibly into trouble, edge of the box, feeds it back to his goalkeeper, Sommer, chased hard by Shea Adams, has put a massive shift in for Scotland up front. Uh, Switzerland have it, ball played back into midfield. Left-footed ball from Xhaka. Infield it comes now to the substitute Sierro, back to Akanji. Akanji in a central position inside his own half. McTominay just stands off him, Akanji curls the ball past him and Rodriguez has a bit of space to work with for Switzerland here. Drives it forward, 30 or 40 yards, up to the corner of the Scottish penalty area. Playing back to Abisher. Abisher in a more central position there. Rodriguez gives it to Abisher. It's played out to the left-hand side. Ralston's got to try and be careful here. Shot comes in, fizzing over the crossbar and behind. It goes yeah. for the goal kick. Again, not getting a lot of help out there. Um, the player of it tried to go and help him, but it was... Uh... Billy Gilmore, who is now really, really struggling. Um, you know, didn't play in the first game there. And I think there's a little bit of cramp in the back of his right foot. And that's the last thing Scotland need just now, is Billy Gilmore's control to be taken out of the game. But that's what you have substitutes for. Scotland won, Switzerland won. I was just mentioning the job that Shea Adams has been doing up top uh, for Scotland there. Lyndon, which is a job you have done plenty. Put a real shift in tonight, hasn't he, Shea? Yeah, definitely. He's working very hard for the team. Um, kind of on the left side for Swiss, with John on the right, but he's tirelessly running around, trying to hold the ball up and get boys into play. So, yeah, good work for him. Linda would absolutely love to be out there. Unfortunately, injured just before this tournament uh, began, having played a massive part in getting Scotland to this Euros. Scotland won, Switzerland won. 12 minutes plus added time remaining. And don't forget, England, Denmark tomorrow. Five o'clock kickoff UK time. Uh, BBC One, the game is also on, but you can sync up with the five live commentary via the iPlayer and have the best uh, of both worlds. And I wonder if, uh, yeah, the Scotland have made the change. It's, uh, I mean, obviously, a lot of tired players out there, but is it Gilmore? McLean. I think it is Gilmore that's coming on for McLean. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Billy Gilmore has done his job for Scotland tonight. He's going to have a fantastic moment here, actually, because he's gone off on the far side of the field to where the dugouts are, and obviously, very sensibly, he's going to take that walk right in front of the Tartan army, massed in that two-tiered stand away to our left, and he will get a rapturous reception as he does that, if the Scotland fans can bear to take their eyes off this gripping game. Scotland won, Switzerland won. McTominay's deflected strike in the first half. He's gone down as a Fabian Cher own goal. Jordan Shakiri's wonderful curling effort gave Angus Gunn no chance. Unfortunately, after Anthony Ralston had played the ball blind, gave it to Shakiri, but he still took the chance quite brilliantly. Switzerland on the ball in the bright white shirts, dark night sky above us in Cologne. And here's Fabian Reeder, the 22 year old for Switzerland in the inside right channel, looking for the run of Mbolo, and Bolo was never going to get to that ball, and it rolls behind for a goal kick McKenna and Mbolo both ending up on the floor yeah um, just interesting to see quite a few times from the centre backs go for it I mean nothing annoys a, a striker a attacker than you know, get the centre back getting in front and then just going to ground it's happened a few times in this game and the referee's not always buying it is he a few times he's let it go and I'll, be, I'll admit my heart slightly in my mouth each time that happens but yeah. at the moment Scotland have to slightly regroup a couple of changes of half had to be made in this game you wouldn't have wanted Tierney off you wouldn't have wanted Gilmore off but the players that have come on they know the jobs the system hasn't changed they know what they've got to do crucial moments towards the end of this game as I said in the first half Switzerland are a tournament tough team 
not been beaten that often recently in group stages. John McGinn thought about a pile driver from 25 yards out, runs with the ball, plays it to Robertson. Cross comes in just beyond McTominay, gets up, glances ahead of behind him. Ralston gets the ball back in. Oh, McTominay hit it so well, might get another go. Right footed ball, another go, maybe McTominay. Still loose inside the box. Adams trying to turn here for Scotland and plays it back sensibly to Hendry. Cross comes in to the far post, headed away by Vidma. The first volley that McTominay struck, I don't know who that hit, that was a fabulous shot and I'm not sure Sommer would have been able to stop it. Well, I don't know who it hit, I also don't know how he's still standing yeah. because he weathered that, he nailed it. Oh, that was just pure bad luck again for Scotland, he caught it perfectly. Just looking at McTominay, I think he's injured himself slightly doing that, he's hardly moved since he had that shot. Once again, the ball drops down and it just doesn't come. Yep, potential penalty check. I, yep. I have to say, I didn't see it. Yep. And it was lashed at him so yes. quickly. But if it's one target and it's hit a hand... Check over. Yeah, I'm not surprised. No, check over. No penalty for Scotland. Great effort from McTominay. Last ten minutes of the game. Scotland have given the ball away. They cannot let it slip now. Reader's ball through the middle. And Bolo, the flag stays down. This is trouble for Scotland. And Bolo, oh, what a finish. He's dinked it over Angus Gunn. It doesn't count. The Swiss fans go bonkers away to our right, the celebrations are cut short, there's beer flying everywhere, and the Scotland fans are having a right old laugh away to our left. It will be checked by the video assistant referee, he looked well offside, Pat. He looked well offside, but how many times have you thought that in the past, somebody looks offside and it's very close? We'll watch that again in a can replay here, and it, it does look, well, about half a yard, yeah. you know, you know yeah. <laughs> there's not daylight between them. But it looks offset. Tell you what, dramatic finish. The McTominay volley blocked and Bolo caught offside. As you've been saying, Pat, it does feel like there's a twist here. It does <laughs> no, feel it like does. something's coming, doesn't yeah, it? It really does. I mean, it's, I mean, I mean Scotland must be proud of themselves. The, the work rate, the effort's been fantastic. The game plan's worked exactly the yeah. way you want it to work. The opportunities have come. They waited and pushed and put the ball in there when they had to. And the opportunities have come. He's just been so unlucky. The point keeps them very much in the tournament for Scotland. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Switzerland have only lost two of their last 14 games at major tournaments. That shows you how solid they are, how good they are, particularly in the group stages. Qualified for the knockout stages at the last five major tournaments. The only other European team to do that across World Cups and Euros is France. Here's Ndoy, left-hand side for Switzerland, again, danger for Scotland, skill from Ndoy, down to the byline, cut back, McGregor's there to intercept, clearance doesn't go that far, a couple of dummies on the cross, then the pass is beyond Ndoy, who goes behind for the Scotland goal kick. There's a bit of relief there, I'll admit, <laughs> just that break that the Swiss had, and it's coming to that point in the game, you know, you think if anyone scores it may well be the deciding factor there, but again, in that defensive area, Scotland have They've been really strong. We're just seeing this uh, shot again. It was off the head of one of those defenders. But the way McTominay caught that there, the first one, was absolutely brilliant. The handball that we're looking at, yeah. absolutely no chance. No, Sierra jumps, trying to block the McTominay shot, and his left arm is tucked in tight to his body, and it sort of comes off that elbow. McLean trying to bring it forward for Scotland. He's now on for Billy Gilmore, of course. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Free kick goes against Scotland. Uh, inside the Swiss half. Six minutes, plus added time remaining. Still 1-1. Switzerland have taken their free kick. And here's a Kanji curling ball for Mbolo to chase again. Gun in a great position, starting position for Scotland. Gets there first, clears it with his left foot. Might fall for McGinn. McGinn leaps, couldn't do anything with the header. And Fabian Scher brings it away. McGinn fancies a bit of Fabian Scher there, chases him. McKenna's got onto that ball for Scotland, plays it back to his goalkeeper Gunn, Reader comes sprinting towards him, Gunn is able to clear in time, doesn't get masses on that, headed forward by Ralston, Adams does well, brings the ball under control, then he's tricked by Rodriguez, he's sort of trod on his heel, referee's having to play at advantage, Scotland wants Shea Adams back on his feet and back up the middle of the pitch, Adams is on his feet but he's on the ball on the centre spot here, Scotland won, Switzerland won and then the referee stopped the game as Adams has been caught again and there's a yellow card this time, for Vincent Sierra. Five minutes remaining, Switzerland about to make a couple of substitutes. Pat Nevin alongside me in the commentary box, as he has been for so many years for Five Live at these major tournaments, and Lyndon Dykes as well, Scotland centre forward is here. Lyndon, how are the nerves? Oh, stressful up here, isn't it? <laughs> it's stressful. Now, the boys are doing well. I think the games have been a bit crazy, to be honest, back and forth, back and forth, but 
just have to make sure we lock the ship up. We've had a couple of chances. They've had a couple of chances and they've put them in the back of the net, but it's been close, so um, we have to make sure we're on it all the way until the end. Uh, Leonidas Sturgeu of Stuttgart comes on in the right back position for Switzerland. And the other change sees Burnley Zeki Amduni on the field uh, as well. He's got a bit of quality about him, so Scotland will be well aware of the danger he possesses. Scotland fans strike up again inside this stadium in Cologne. A Scotland come forward with McGinn. That looks like a good ball into the box. Glancing header away. Ralston is there. He's got support on the corner of the penalty area. McLean left footed, bobbly one straight at Sommer, and it's very easy for the Swiss keeper to deal with. Pat Nevin. Yeah, I know that a shame there. It's one of those ones you want to zip it to the back post with a little bit of height. We've got enough players in there. McDrummond is just constantly in there. He's almost an out and out centre forward most of the time now. Yeah, he's playing as kind of false one, but he's getting in there so often. And Scotland do look very dangerous when they're getting into those wide areas. Uh, and Bolo, deep for Switzerland, starts a move here. Jack is on the ball, plays it through the middle. Switzerland still bringing that forward, but intercepted by Robertson. Zam Dooney trying to get his first touch, trying to break into the Scotland penalty area. Gun clears, headed forward by Sierra, intercepted by McGregor. McGinn loses it to Cher on the halfway line, wanted a free kick. Cher is tackled, three minutes plus added time remaining. Great drama here on Five Live and BBC Sounds. More drama coming your way tomorrow as well. England, Denmark, middle of the three commentaries, kicks off at five o'clock. Make sure you're here with John Murray, Matt Upson, Connor Cody, part of the team as well. Eight o'clock tomorrow night on Five Live and BBC Sounds. We've got Spain, Italy. Uh, Switzerland have it with a kanji. Akanji's at walking pace inside his own half, and Bolo has dropped deep in between the Scottish defence and Scottish midfield. It comes across to Cher. Switzerland, as you said, Pat, in the better position, really, in the sense they've got a win in the group, so the draw suits them OK. Yeah, they, I mean, they're not over pushing it, but then just for a moment there, they had five attackers you know, up the field there when they were trying to play. So they would love to win this game as well. I'm putting themselves in a great position, but for Scotland... I mean, I, have, I will admit I'm slightly disappointed at the moment yeah. because of a couple of chances that we had in the second half. But you said before the game you'd have taken a point, and it's it's getting to that stage now. Do you settle or do you keep going? Lawrence Shankland and Ryan Christie waiting to come on for Scotland very late in this game. We're into the 89th minute. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Scotland having taken the lead, pegged back with Shakiri's stunner ball forward inside the Scottish half, Robertson's got to get there, first he's conceded the free kick, came chasing him for the ball, caught the man, Switzerland have a free kick in the inside right channel, about 30 yards out. That was a really difficult one there, he's definitely going for it, I mean he's absolutely missed the player as well, but he also missed the ball, it's a very dangerous position, and this is the point where I'm delighted Shakiri isn't on the pitch, because he's not bad from here. Yes, exactly, inside right channel, uh, it was Reader who was fouled, and it's Rita who's placing the ball for the free kick. Experienced head of Manuel Akanji comes across to have a word with the 22-year-old. Ticking over into the 90th minute of the game, close up shot of the face of a Scotland fan, and she cannot bear to watch, and I don't blame her either. Scotland won, Switzerland won. At the moment, Scotland got a hold out here, added time on the way, Reader's left-footed delivery towards the far post, it's good, and the header is down and wide, what a chance for Switzerland to win the game late on, Zeki Amdouni had a clear sight of goal, and he's nodded it wide. Do you know what, it's a brilliant ball then, an absolutely phenomenal ball, and I, I wonder if he would have been offside, maybe, maybe not, but Scotland have been here so many times, last minute, things that have just gone wrong for us, in that case, we've, uh, we've slightly got away with one, I would suggest. Right. Scotland substitutes coming here. John McGinn is coming off. Lawrence Shankland is coming on. Ryan Christie is coming on. Just waiting to see who the other Scottish player to come off it's got is. got to be Adams. It's got to be Adams, yeah. surely. A, a what? By the way, what a shift. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But let's talk to a man who knows about these things. Yeah, that's right. I was just going to say, Lyndon Dyke still watching this game with us. I mean, Lyndon, if it does finish 1-1, taking a point into the final group game against Hungary, knowing that a win should, should be enough to get through to the last 16, that'll be fantastic. Yeah, definitely. It's still, We're still in it, you know what I mean? We've got one more game, we can still get the points. It's not over yet now, we have to make sure we stop giving these, uh, the Swiss these chances because the next one, we might not get so lucky. Mm, four minutes of added time has started now. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Can Scotland create a chance late in this game? 
and send the Tartan army wild. Robertson's swinging cross from deep into the Swiss penalty area and out again. But Ralston is there on the right-hand side. Ralston going to have a little run, dart to the byline, cross into the near post. Xhaka stoops and heads it away. Falls to the edge of the box. McLean fizzes a pass here into the feet of Christie. Lays it back to McGregor. McGregor trying to work the space. Clever cross. Robertson heads it across. Goal! Oh, it's a chance. The candy's there. Gets a foot on it. Knocks it straight up in the air. Switzerland struggling to get it away. Good hit from McGregor. A lot of power, but gets underneath it. Over the bar it goes. I thought that was going to be the moment, Pat. One of the best moves of the game. Ryder team brilliantly played there. Over the back to, obviously, Robertson always goes in there. He puts it into the perfect position. You've got to see, I think it is a kanji there. Brilliant defending. I mean, absolutely world-class. Not just European-class defending there. And he knows he's going to have a player. Shanklin will always get into that position. He was ready for the tap-in. Shanklin was not ready for the man who got in front of Makanji. Makanji, yeah. McTominay was in there as well, looking to get a touch on that. Scotland have headed the ball into the Switzerland half. A minute and a half of added time has gone. Two and a half minutes to go. As Lyndon Dykes has just been saying, Scotland got to stay switched on at the back, but they have just managed to create that chance. At the moment, they're playing the ball back to their goalkeeper, Angus Gunn. Gunn's off balance, unfortunately has sliced that out straight to the stands for a throw into Switzerland on the left, on the halfway line. Two minutes to play. Scotland won, Switzerland won. Again, underline that Ralston getting to that back post there. When that ball was played in from the left hand side, Ralston had made all that ground up. He was the further forward player in that Scotland team. He has had some energy in this game. Jan Zommer passes the ball out, the Swiss keeper, to Fabian Scher on the right. Sierra inside his own half to Scher. Less than two minutes to play here. 1 1. Keep Scotland in the tournament they know a win against Hungary would give them four points and at the last couple of Euros if you get yourself four points that has got you through to the last 16 at the very least as one of the best third placed teams the ball is with Akanji Akanji across to Cher just over a minute remaining Cher's ball driven upfield headed forward by Amdouni and Bolo but Gunn is there and Bolo was trying to race onto it Gunn I thought hesitated for a second but got out in time uh, to grab the ball I think he slipped <laughs> that was the problem he was coming out and then he slipped a little bit and just that horrible moment you thought oh no not that sort of thing but once again got the right thing got on the end of it and uh, and so far Scotland are deserving of this point if yeah. that's all they get Shackland getting involved Winning the ball for Scotland, wide it goes to Andy Robertson. Ah, oh, Robertson just ran the ball just a bit too far there into Sturgeu, but he has won a throw in on the left for Scotland. Steve Clark, put word in the captain's ear. Robertson desperately waving players into space. Last minute, last chance for Scotland to get themselves potentially a famous, famous win. But a point will do. What will do, they'll happily take that into the final game against Hungary on Sunday. Scott McKenna is going to drive a ball in from deep, and I tell you what, Ralston's in space here on the right hand side. Ralston's cross comes into the far post. Christie jumps, headed away. McClay controls it, ball spins up on him, lobs it up in the air, looking for Robertson on the left. Robertson underneath this nods it down. And there's Christie, the ball hit his left arm there. Referee didn't see it. Robertson curls that cross into the near post, headed away by Cher. Falls in front of Reader. Scotland will not let Switzerland get out here at the moment. Time is running out in this game. Four minutes of added time are up, and that's that. The drama is brought to an end in Cologne. Scotland are still very much in this tournament. Against a tournament tough team in Switzerland, they took the lead through Scott McTominay's deflected strike. They gave Jordan Shakiri a chance that he was never going to refuse. A fabulous equaliser from the left boot of Shakiri, And then it really toed and froed in the second half. Both teams will feel they possibly could have won it. One great late chance created by Scotland was hacked away by Manuel Akanji. But in terms of the difference, Pat, the feeling, the performance, the energy, everything we've seen from Scotland in this second game, day and night, from what we saw in Munich five days ago. Yeah, I have to say I'm not hugely surprised by that. That wasn't a Scotland performance against the Germans. Everything that could go wrong for them went wrong and, you know, players just didn't turn up. They weren't at their best. However, that's not the way Scotland have been under Stevie Clark when we've been trying to get into these finals. And that's real Scotland turning up today. Uh, last quick word from Lyndon Dykes. Lyndon, thank you for joining us for the commentary. I know probably quite hard actually watching it up here when you really should be out there playing. What did you make of Scotland tonight? I mean, what a game. Uh, I think it had a bit of everything, but credit to the boys. They played really well. Strong attacking, strong defending. 
There was chances both ends, a little bit of luck with the VAR on our side. They had a little bit of luck with Hanley hitting the post. Um, but all in all, I think it was a, a top, top performance, top game. Um, I see why all managers lose their hair because I'm up here stressing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for having me and uh, it was really enjoyable. Uh, yeah, you're very welcome, Lyndon. Uh, both players, sets of players exhausted out on the field, go to receive the adulation from the brilliant fans inside this stadium. Top game, top night, top atmosphere, and Scotland still in with a shout here. Group A, Germany are through, they've won two out of two. They're top on six points, Switzerland on four having drawn tonight, Scotland on one, and Hungary on none. If Scotland can beat Hungary in Stuttgart on Sunday night, they could very well become the first Scottish team to make it out of the group stages at a major international tournament. It's finished here in Cologne, Scotland won. Switzerland won. So, Alistair Bruce Ball, you're telling us there's a chance for Scotland to make it to the knockout stages of the, the Euros. Pat, as you were just saying to, to Ali, you know, this is a very different performance from Scotland in terms of comparison to the game against Germany, but it's not a different Scotland performance in terms of all the games that, that were before that and the qualifying campaign. This is actually just how Scotland play. <laughs> and it's great to see it. And it's that horrible feel. Are we not going to turn up at a tournament? Is it going to be looking bad in front of the whole of Europe and to some degree a lot of the world as well? But those players know they've done it. They and know those players are down in front of their own supporters. They've gone down to kind of show their appreciation to those fans who were incredible this evening as they were in the opening game, despite the, the scoreline. And there's still that, that positivity amongst them. And they are shouting at those players. They are roaring them on. They know how big that game to come against Hungary and Stuttgart is. Do you know what? We'd all have taken this position before the start. You know, a draw with the Swiss, knowing that against the Hungarians, look, win that game and you're through. We'd have been delighted with that. We'd have liked it to make sure that we had all those players available. Now, I've got the feeling it won't be Kieran Tierney. He doesn't look as if he's coming back. We don't ever worry about... Um, Billy Gilmore, he's out there walking around with the rest, that's just cramped, that's nothing more than that, he'll be okay, he'll be back, he'll be fine, but it's also lifted the players, hasn't it? You can see it's lifted not only the fans, but the players as well, they think, all right, so it's not gone, we can do it, we can we can play at this level against a pretty well-ranked side, a well-rated side, a good-rated side, and arguably make, maybe not as many, but as good chances, and that one from Hanway, I mean, that's just, when I... Is that just so Scotland, isn't it? <laughs> but it's that chance and, an, and a couple of other chances that weren't anywhere near as close as, as Grant Hanley's. Is that why there's a slight air of disappointment, even though you would have taken it? Yeah, for me, definitely, and for most Scotland fans. But if, if we're honest about it, it was the last parts of the game where the Swiss were the better side. And we were fearful, you know, there really was. But they showed the, the real the composure, but also the bravery to say, right, we're coming back. We can get back into it, we can get back on the ball. We didn't do that against Germany, but we're good enough to do that as a group. So it was great to see that. Um, there are other options, you know, some Scotland fans may think, and we'll have a phone in afterwards, no doubt, and, you know, why not Shankland? You know, and, but I'm watching the work rate of Che Adams there. Honest to goodness, I don't know how he does it. It's just solid, constant, chasing, giving no time and space. And it doesn't often look like you're the one that's part of the reason why we're getting good possession, but it is him, because he's dragging other people back and he's stretching the game for us, and he's making space for all the McTomins of this world and for the Gilmores of this world. So I thought he was fabulous tonight, but then I looked through the whole team, I thought they all really worked hard. And can I say one word for Ralston? He's going to get some stick. It was his mistake. He passed the ball back, it's a no look pass, and he's came on. And I don't think anyone, any player in that scoring team's given more than him. Now, if you make mistakes and if there are quality issues, that's all. But see, see for effort and willingness and to be brave enough to keep on doing it and not hiding. I, I absolutely salute that man. What about Steve Clark and the way that he's managed to, to lift those players from the heavy defeat by Germany to coming here and putting in that kind of performance that had all that energy in it? Because with a lack of, of confidence, with a disappointment, you could understand if this was a, a, another flat performance from Scotland, but they've managed. Steve Clark and the senior players have managed to really turn that around. I honestly look at Clarkie's career, you know, and all the, the brilliant jobs working with brilliant, brilliant men. They're really some of the best coaches on this planet. And he's really, 
he's learned, he's not copied anyone, he's just learned and listened. Um, and I think all came to bear in the night like tonight. You needed to get everything right tonight. You needed to get the team right, you needed to get the tactics right. You needed to be able to give that belief onto that group of players. You had to do all of that. And he's managed it. That's a big thing. That's a lot to do. And I'll be honest with you beforehand, I wasn't sure we were, we were going to be able to do it. I hoped and I knew we had the capabilities, but where are we going to be able to do it? Was Stevie going to get that sort of uh, performance out of them? He did, and that's why he's extraordinarily highly rated, not only in Scotland, but in the wider world. We'll have a chat in, in more detail between now and, and half past, but just a quick word on the challenge that, that Hungary posed for, for Scotland. You saw them in the opening game. I know you were, you were preparing for, for this one, so you won't have seen all of their game against Germany. Having seen Scotland's performance in this game, what's your, what's your very quick surface thoughts? And we'll get into it in more depth afterwards. It's going to be an absolute cracker. Great. <laughs> I promise you this is going to be a cracker. They're going to go for it. Scotland must go for it. It is going to be one of those open, wild, random games with lots of chances. Don't have to lots of goals, but lots of chances. Do not miss that game. We will talk lots more about that game as we look ahead to it. We'll also look back on a really entertaining one-all draw in Cologne. It was end-to-end -end stuff. It was tense. It could have gone either way. It's a share of the spoils at the end of it. It puts Switzerland on four points, Scotland on one point with Hungary to come and a chance to qualify for the knockout stages of a major tournament for the first time. If you want to have your say on that performance, 606 with Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton is coming up at 10.30. The number to call for that is 08085 909 693. We're with you till 10.30 after the BBC News with Lisa McCormick. The voice of the UK. And the home of the Euros and the general election 2024. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. A police officer working in Rishi Sunak's close protection team has been arrested and suspended from duty over a bet allegedly placed in the timing of the general election. The Met Police were contacted by the Gambling Commission last Friday. Here's our political editor, Chris Mason. The matter was immediately referred to officers in the Met's Directorate of Professional Standards who opened an investigation and the officer was also removed from operational duties. The officer was subsequently arrested on Monday the 17th of June, that was Monday of this week, on suspicion of misconduct in public office. He was taken into custody and bailed pending further inquiries. Rishi Sunak says today's inflation figures mean the economy's turned a corner. A fall in the price of food and lower price rises for household goods and furniture has helped the rate of inflation meet the Bank of England's target of 2% for the first time in almost three years. The Labour leader, Sir Keir Starmer, says the lower rate doesn't mean life's got easier for many people. Daisy Cooper is the deputy leader of the Liberal Democrats. Well, the hard truth is that millions of people will not be feeling any benefit today. Food prices are still incredibly high. Those food prices are not going to be coming down. It means the prices won't be going up quite as fast, but people are still feeling incredibly stretched. Bills are very, very high. Mortgage rates are higher. People are really struggling with this cost of living crisis, which is of the Conservatives' own making. The SNP says if it wins a majority of seats in Scotland, negotiations and independence should start after the election. The SNP wants to focus on investing billions more in the NHS and rejoining the EU as an independent nation. A baby girl's died after being attacked by her family pet dog in Coventry. The seven-month-old was rushed to hospital on Sunday afternoon for treatment for serious head injuries but died a short time later. Police say the dog wasn't classed as a dangerous breed. And a rare first edition Harry Potter book has sold for more than £45,000. The copy of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was one of the first 500 copies of the novel to be printed in 1997. The team sheets are in and it's quite a lineup they've gone with here. Kyle Walker and Micah Richards, Lineker, Savage, Chapman, Shearer, Kate, Bamford, Sutton, Crossman, Rooney and Mbappe. This is just getting silly now. From Match of the Day Top 10, you'll never beat Kyle Walker and the Football Daily, Five Live has the perfect lineup of podcasts to accompany the Euros. It's an Listen on BBC Sounds. Euro 2024 Deutschland. With Kelly Kitts. On Five Live and BBC Sounds. Host Germany, the first team through to the knockouts. They beat Hungary 2-0. Big celebrations for Albania. They scored a 95th minute equaliser to draw 2 all with Croatia. Our focus here in Cologne has been Scotland. 
Deep Clark's men realistically had to avoid defeat against Switzerland if they wanted to maintain their hopes of qualifying for Group A and from the knockout stages. And Alistair Bruce Ball, they got a point. How did they do it? Well, I would say, Kelly, we saw the real Scotland again. The Scotland that qualified so brilliantly for this tournament in the first place. A team that righted the wrongs of Munich on the opening night. And if Grant Hanley's second half header had been just a couple of inches to the right-hand side, then it could have been a famous winner from the man who plays his club football for Norwich rather than crashing back uh, off the post. But a point still very much keeps Scotland in it, uh, knowing a win against Hungary on Sunday in Stuttgart should very likely see them through to the knockout stages of a major tournament for the first time uh, in their history. And, and the effort and the commitment and the skill level and the concentration was fabulous to a man. Um, Scotland fans gloried in the first half goal from Scott McTominay. Brilliant Quicksilver counter-attack from inside their own half. McTominay's left-footed shot was on target. I think Sommer would have saved it. Uh, Fabian Scher stuck out a right foot and deflected it past his own keeper. And where they'll be kicking themselves just a little bit is that they really gifted Switzerland their goal. It was a loose pass. Anthony Ralston didn't look inside his own half, knocked it back towards his own penalty area and it gave Jordan Shakiri a chance. Now, it was a 1 in 10 chance, really, 25 yards out. The sweetest hit you'll ever see with a left foot into the top corner gave Angus Gunn no chance. But Scotland really recovered well from that setback. And I think you'd have to say at the end of it all, Kelly, you know, it toed and froed in the second half here in Cologne. And two superb sets of fans gave us such a wonderful atmosphere for the game as well. I think you have to say Scotland deserved the point and they will go into that game against Hungary in really, really good heart on Sunday. We will get the thoughts of Pat Nevin and Charlie Adam in just a second. First, though, let's hear from the Scotland captain, Andy Robertson, with Ailey Barber. Andy, listen to the noise in here. You wanted to make a nation proud again, and I think you can tell you, you've done that. It must feel a lot better standing here tonight. More like us, much more like us. Um, aggressive on the front foot, can get off to a better start. And then, obviously, um, we make a mistake, but... Let's make no mistake about it, Tony Ralston was unbelievable after that mistake. Not many people could come back from that. You know, it was a difficult one for him, but the second half he was different class. And fair play to him to recover from that. And then um, we had our chances, but so did they. It was an open game, two really good teams going at it. But that was a lot more like us. We're a lot more happy with that performance. We probably could have scored, maybe. But I'm sure they would say the same thing. So look, we'll take the draw and we've took it into the last game. That's all we can ask. We've heard the word resilience used a lot over these last few days. How much of it did you need to put out a performance like that? Yeah, of course. And it was just about, like I said in the press conference yesterday, getting back to being us. And I thought that was a lot more like us. I think you can tell by the people back the goal there. I think they were a lot happier with what they've seen on the pitch. And honestly, we've left absolutely everything out there today. And that's what it takes to play for your country. So we need to rest. We need to recover. We need to go again Sunday because that's a massive game for us now. And we played a really good team today. And We'll face another really good team again on Sunday. And history is still right there for you. It goes to the last game to try and get yourselves out of this group stage. You can take a lot from tonight into that, I'm sure. But like you say, it'll be a lot of rest and recovery as well. Yeah, we can take a lot of positives from tonight. But we can also tweak a little thing and improve even more. And that's the that's a good thing. So hopefully you see that on Sunday. But like you said, we need to get to our beds now, I think, and recover. Take tomorrow, really recover properly. And then what day are we even on? Wednesday, so and then Friday. We need to really be ready to go on the training pitch and then come Sunday we'll be good to go with the backing that we've got. That was Andy Robertson talking to Ailey Barber. Pat, I'm just trying to to formulate a, a sort of description of the emotion at the end of, of that game. I, I, some combination of relief, maybe a bit of pride back for, for Scotland, a bit of confidence back in there. Yeah, a lot of pride back, a lot of pride back. Um, you don't walk off a game like that without that sort of effort and and as again you said in your intro there you know the technique was fine as well I mean, those last parts of the games where Scotland held it the way they just didn't look capable of holding it and after the Germany game a lot of people have watched, watched that having not watched Scotland before and thought they're out of the league they're out of the class and I don't I don't think that's the case because Scotland have shown time and again that they're capable of doing better but you have to do it when you come here well we did it when we come here um, and just be able to do it again, get players like Gilmo fit again. He's you know lasted 60, 70 minutes, something like that today. We need that again at the very, very least. Um, but I'm just, I, I walk off and I'm happy. Minor dis disappointment that we didn't get the win, but in, the, in actual fact, did we really deserve a win? No, I, 
I'm, all, I'm not that biased. Look, the Swiss are a good team. They had their chances. Robbo was exactly the same. We accepted it. We all felt that if we got a point out of this, we'd probably be quite happy beforehand. We'd, we'd, we'd take it off you and walk away. Well, I'm taking it off you and I'm walking away just now <laughs> with that tiny little scintilla, a tiny wee bit of sadness that we didn't get that last sneak goal. Charlie, what did you make of it? I, I think there was a lot of a lot of good good moments, a lot of um, things you need to improve on in terms of defensively. With you know, I know Tony Ralston gets people make makes mistakes, but again, if you want to dig deeper, I think Kieran Tierney is too wide from the the striker. I think he's got to be marking on the other side of him. So small details, but again, when you play at top top level football, you get punished for that, and that's what happens. But overall, I think from a performance and a reaction the other night I think it was very very good and um, it gives us an opportunity on Sunday against a very good Hungarian team um, you know ranked 26th in the world you know these are no no, no team to to be messed with um, these are a good side I know Switzerland beat them but Scotland are going to have to put that performance in again and a wee bit more um, if they want to get that, that result they need to qualify but again another step in the right direction good belief and we've taken it to the last game, and that and that gives that um, that group of players and staff a lot of confidence going into to Sunday's match. It would be really nice if we could score a goal. They're not giving, <laughs> it, they're not giving McTominay that goal. <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a joke. Do you know what I think? I'll that take means? another two on goals on Sunday if we qualify. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I think it means? I think it means that Scotland have a zero percent conversion rate for this for this Euros. <laughs> and and, and they might do and still qualify, but again, you know, Pat said before the game. I'm, I'm quite happy Shakiri plays, but I was the, um, you know, you see, what a, what a finish! I was just watching it back again. It's a great, unbelievable goal. You know, that's him scored, you know, three World Cups, three European Championships. It's it's an incredible t- um, start for him, and um, you know, it was an unbelievable finish. But again, from a Scotland point of view, we gave ourselves a chance, and um, you know, a lot, a lot of moments to be proud of, and um, we we'll look forward to Sunday now. Do you know the whole Shakiri thing? I was as soon as I said it, I said the phrase, "I'll live to rue that." I knew I would. I, I, knew, I mean, I knew I would. I mean, so I'm, I'm comfortable that I knew that would happen because that's a it always happens. But b, if you give him a chance, now I'd love to know how many touches he had in that first half. Honestly, there was so few. He had so little impact in it, and it was not, the thing. I didn't. I didn't want somebody running away from us. You know, he's he's not of an age and of an ability to do that running away. The problem is if you give him. And I was going to say half a chance. That's not half a chance, is it? No, that's just all that, so much to yeah, do. Yeah, and that's just, what that is. It's just clever play upstairs, just you know, yeah. using went seeing where he is and and going for goal and um, you know, shows some spectacular goals over his career and he's probably not had one many better than that. You know, let's say getting to ten goals at, at major tournaments for for a national team of Switzerland is an incredible achievement for him. We've got a surprise visitor. James McFadden's come up, come up to talk to us. Hello, James. How are you? All right. Not too bad. Not too bad. And look, it's a draw. It's not perfect, but how much better was that? Oh, it was much better. I think overall the performance. We did say in the, in the lead up, and we have spoken over the last few days, and and the message was it can't be any worse. But that doesn't mean it's definitely going to be better. Um, but straight from the off, you could see the intent to go and press and try and put Swiss, Switzerland under as much pressure as it could. And crucially, you know, we got the first goal and gave us a real belief. And you could see the players were, you know, there was a lot of kind of talk and, and John McGinn speaking before the game saying that he was one of the ones that, that got boot up the backside. And I think there would have been some honest conversations, but I think you have to say it's so unlike Scotland to perform the way they did against Germany. You expected them to do it, but that's easier said than done. So, yeah, I think they've done that pretty well. Get to one each, moments to control the game. You've got chances to go and win it. And yeah, we're being greedy by saying we'd love to have won the game, but the most important part was still being in it and still having a chance to qualify. And that's what they've given themselves. And hopefully the improvement from Friday that we've seen tonight, we say the same amount on uh, Sunday. And I don't know if that's possible, but I can be hopeful. Look, as, as much as, as Scotland had their chances, then they, they went so close. That Grant Hanley header, I think, is going to be keeping a lot of Scotland fans awake this evening. That and the party in Cologne is going to be keeping them awake this evening. But Switzerland had their, their chances too, so probably a draw, a fairish result in, in the end. But those moments, those moments are going to be going through Scotland fans' heads and Scotland players' heads. Yeah, without doubt, Grant Hanley will be thinking about it um, because, you know, I miss chances in games that, that still sometimes keep me up at night. Um, and that will keep Grant Hanley up but 
like his job's not to score goals. I know he, he probably has a decent threat from set plays. He does really well, and actually when he's he's throwing everything at it, he's putting his head in where it hurts. He knows he can take a kick in the head as well. Um, but yeah, I think that you know Switzerland clearly had chances um, as well. And but they were a team that a draw kind of suits them. We needed at least a draw to stay alive. A draw suits them better than us, obviously. Um, but yeah, I think draw is probably a fair result. We'd have loved to go and win it in the end, but yeah, I think you have to say a, a fair result. I, I, think, I think I just jump in there. I think one thing as well, you know, I was quite critical of Angus Gunn uh, for a couple of goals the other night as well, but I think his save from um, Ndoy was unbelievable. If you watch it back, he actually gets a touch to it round the post. When Tierney does his injury, he actually saves it, and it's an incredible save. But, you know, like I say again, you need big moments, your goalkeeper to stand up when you're under a bit of pressure, and um, to be fair to them, they've they've battled away and they've managed to get that point so that was a brilliant save and a great reaction from him as well There have been a few players who've, who've come in for some criticism and Angus Gunn one of them uh, Tony Ralston and another one but one of the players that Scotland fans were desperate to see start a game in this Euros is Billy Gilmore he did so they got their one all draw and he's been talking to Ailey Barber Billy that was a, an absolute shift out there but it must feel so worth it to have everything still in your hands come this last game yeah, I think uh, we gave everything out there. We knew we had to bounce back after the last performance and it puts us in a good place. So, of course, we've we, we done well tonight uh, and now focus on the next. What does it say about this group of players that you were able to turn it around quite as much as you did tonight and, and get a point? Yeah, we, we're a good team. We know our strengths and tonight it was more like a Scotland performance as we've seen. First, the first game generally tough, uh, top top team tough uh, tough opponent and tonight I think we we put everything into that uh, and you can see by the boys reactions you're one of the younger players in, in this squad of players but you've been amongst it for a few years now how important has been the experience in this dressing room to try and ensure that that performance tonight we knew it was capable but that you were able to go out and do it yeah, we, we believe so, we did. Uh, we've been working straight after the journey game, straight in the training pitch and focus in Switzerland uh, to make sure we went and done it right. Uh, tonight, good. I think it was more like us, just good performance. Uh, gave everything. Uh, now we need to recover and get ready for hungry. Just spoke to your captain and he said there's even things that can happen to make you even better in this next group game because this could be a group of players that make history. Yeah, we, we, we gave everything tonight. We're a good team. Maybe we'll just get into the, the game, the first game, with the reactions opening game, nervous, uh, nerves kicked in. Uh, but tonight I think it was more of a Scotland performance, getting after the ball, uh, passionate, everything was there. That was Billy Gilmore with Kieran, Kieran, Kieran Tierney. Kieran Tierney? I don't know what I'm calling him. Kieran Tierney. Definitely was him. It wasn't even him. It was Billy no. Gilmore <laughs> talking to Ailey Barber. <laughs> so I'm writing down Kieran, Kieran Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's been a long day. I've been writing down Kieran Tierney's name because I want to talk about him missing. But Billy Gilmore was very definitely talking to Ailey Barber. Let's get that absolutely yeah. clear. That was definitely her voice on, on that interview. And I want to get Charlie's thoughts on, on Billy Gilmore and the difference that he makes. But, but first come to you, Pat, because you were saying before the game, and it's one of those little things that you notice when you're actually in the ground watching a player play, but how much he talks to the other players, how much he directs them when he's, when he's on the pitch. And that's as much part of his influence as anything he does himself. Yeah, there's so few players in world football that can control games of football at the very top level. There are really, really few. Now, he's not controlled the entirety of the game there, but the best of our play comes through Billy and because we can play out from difficult areas, it develops space for us. And he's, he's extra special. He's really, really special. And it's, uh, I mean, we go back to when Fadi and I were chatting a couple of days before, we couldn't understand the concept of him not starting in the first game. We just, we couldn't get our heads around it. But he showed it tonight that he is a fabulous, fabulous player. And the fact that he comes on and he talks there, and you, you, you almost think his intelligence in the, in, the, in, the, in the game should sort of make him be able to speak so beautifully about the gorgeousness He's of the game. He's he didn't. No, don't what he does... Interviews. No, don't jump in there. What he actually <laughs> does is he's just very sensible. Yeah. He's just quite cleverly, sensibly, not getting carried away. This is what I do. I'm a top player and this is what I do. And it's a, I mean, it's a joy. We're very, very fortunate to have him. I, I just hope he plays in every single game that we get. Yeah, absolutely matter of fact, as you say, in, in his interview and, and the way he talks about it and, and in the way he plays. What, what difference do you think he made, Charlie? 
I think it gives you an option that he wants to get on the ball and he, he'll take it in areas. Um, I think he can be. I think he can pass it forward more. Uh, you know, and, and at times he is quite safe. But what he gives you, he gives you the option. He always shows for the ball. Even I seen him kicking the ball out for the pitch at one point. But his first thought is, how do I get it back? Where's the next pass? How do I go and get it again? And that, for me, is that's what top players do. They want the ball all the time. And it doesn't matter who you are. I remember, he's been he's been schooled well through, you know, Rangers and Chelsea, and now at Brighton, they play the right good football. So he's he's he's, he's a he's a very good player for 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 Scotland and, and for our country. That the players that we need it in games like this against Switzerland, when you need the, the, somebody to get on the ball like him, McGregor. They're very comfortable and um, you know, gives a better chance in a platform to, to build the game you know, more than we do when we, we don't have them. Uh, Angus Gunn has been talking to Kieran Tierney, uh, also known as Ailey Barber. <laughs> Angus, that must feel a lot better tonight. Yeah, 100%. I think um, you know, everything in the game from the start was um, 10 times better, obviously, from the, uh, from the game on Friday night. Um, just our intensity, I think, um, pressing the ball, our aggression, um, winning the ball high up, I think that really um, set us off at the start of the game. And, um, yeah, to be fair, the lads, the lads managed to um, keep it going for 90 minutes. Uh, some of them were flagging at the end, but, um, but yeah, I think it was a uh, much, uh, much more like us kind of performance there. Was that the sort of main message coming into this game to ensure that that intensity and aggression was there from the start? Because that's what's been so common with Scotland displays over the past. Yeah, and I think that's obviously um, where it started on Friday, where, where we let ourselves down probably. Um, and that's what we wanted to, to bring back into the game today, and we did that. And um, you, can, you can just see how much of a lift that gives the players and obviously the fans as well. And um, yeah, that, that was really the um, you know the boost we needed in the, at the start of the game. And um, obviously getting that goal um, in the first half was, was was good as well. And um, I thought it was a pretty even second half, and um, you know probably could have gone either way. But um, yeah, we, we'll, we'll take it to the last game in the end. It's been a tough week for all of you, collectively, but also individually as well. How deep have you had to dig tonight to get yourself back out there and put in a performance like that? Yeah, very deep. I think, um, you know, personally I was hurting after the, the game on Friday night. Um, didn't feel like I'd done myself justice. I think a lot of the boys in the dressing room felt like that as well. Um, and, you know, that was that was the motivation for today, to come out, show what, what we're all about. Um, and I think, you know, everyone to a man done that today. How exciting is it now? You've got a very short turnaround, but a performance you can be proud of to take into that final game and potentially make that history. Yeah, that's what we wanted to come, um, you know, before the game today. We wanted to go into the last game having something to play for. Um, you know, I've, you know, we potentially could have nicked it at the end, which would have made you know circumstances different. But um, yeah, you know, we go to the last game knowing what we've got to do, and um, yeah, hopefully we can um, pull off uh, another big result for Scotland. That was Angus Gunn talking to Ailey and, and sort of reiterating what's coming out of the, the Scotland squad this evening, which is that sense of everybody feeling like they've, they've done themselves justice. There was the injury, though, to Kieran Tierney. Um, what do you think that's going to do for Scotland in the game against Hungary? How much will they miss him? Uh, it's a huge loss. I think that, you know, particularly the, the relationship with Andy Robertson, where he can, he can let Andy go and be brave and go high up the pitch and, and almost, you know, cover for him. Um, he's a brilliant 1v1 defender. Um, and he's, look, he's the reason we play a back three, back five whenever it comes because you have to get the both of them in the squad. It didn't look great, you know, the, the, the incident and hopefully, you know, he has had his hamstring problems. Hopefully it's not as bad as it is certainly but it looked having to be stretched off. But yeah, he's a huge blow um, but, but hopefully, you know, the players will use that maybe to galvanise him again a that little bit further to say, you know, go and do it and, and do it for Kieran and, and, and try and put on a performance but it'll be a huge loss, there's no doubt about it. We see that every time he's missing from the Scotland team but in these moments that's when people need to step up and that's when sometimes people wait for the opportunity to get it and they take it it is going to be a miss if indeed he is unavailable for the game against Hungary James thanks for coming up to chat to us no problem anytime lovely, lovely for you to, to fill your time <laughs> by, by coming up to chat to us uh, you're off now James is with us of course Pat's still with us Alistair is still with us and we're also joined by Charlie Adam and now Chris Sutton hello Chris Sutton Hello, Kelly. Are you all right? I'm very well indeed. So 6.06 coming up at, at 10.30 here on, on Five Live with you and Robbie. What did you think of, of Scotland's performance? And what do you think people will want to talk about? Um, I, I really enjoyed their performance because of the walloping that Scotland took against Germany. I, I didn't really know whether they had 
a performance in them this evening. I thought they were incredibly brave in the way that they played. I thought Gilmore made uh, a huge difference. And they're still in there scrapping, still in there fighting. Get a result against uh, Hungary, get a win against Hungary. And who knows? And to be in this position after that first game, uh, I think is absolutely massive. Um, a couple of question marks, maybe, to so want to hear from uh, from Scotland fans. Does Steve Clark, does he make his attacking changes too late? I think uh, Shanklin came on in the 90th minute, Christie came on, and I think there are Scotland fans who felt that maybe Shanklin would have been a better option had he gone on earlier. Who's, who's going to take uh, Kieran Tierney's uh, position? It looks like it will be uh, McKenna, and I've been back. I spoke to uh, Ali um, earlier today. Uh, I love Anthony Ralston. Of course you did. I, I think, <laughs> yes, I did. I love Anthony Ralston, but it has been a struggle. The, the last two games have been a struggle. I'm not just talking about the misplaced pass, wonderful finish as it was from uh, from uh, Shakiri, but I just wonder whether James Forrest, he has played in that right wing-back role before. I know he's more of an attacking player, but is it time for James Forrest to get the nod against Hungary? Charlie, that's what they're, they're going to be chatting about on, on 606. There has been criticism of, of Anthony Ralston. That's true. There, there is going to be potentially a, a role to fill if Kieran Tierney does miss out through injury. What, what are your thoughts ahead of the game against Hungary? Yeah, yeah I think McKenna will come in. I, I, I listen, I think Tierney's he's, he's, listen, he's a very good player, but I think Scott McKenna gives us good balance, good presence, set plays. Um, so, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Listen, Anthony Ralston's had a tough time in the two games. He's put up against some good players, but ultimately it comes down to body shape, body position, and trying to receive, um, receiving it. Skills at times have been, have not been right. Um, it's too square of one v one situations where, you know, a lad kept coming inside. But that's part and parcel of a learning curve of playing at the top level in, in the European Championships. Um, so again, learning curve for him. But you know, Steve's Steve's in there making the decision. Like Chris said, yeah, I wouldn't be against James Forrest coming in. You know, he's finished the season well at Celtic and. Um, now gives them an opportunity maybe to, to, to go and freshen up again. And Charlie, Scotland have given themselves a chance of qualifying for the knockout stages of this co competition. How good are those chances, do you think, at this moment? Well, I think if real detail in terms of performance, I still think there's a, a lot we can improve on. Um, these Hungarian, There's some good players on the Hungarian side, they're going to cause you problems, but Scotland will, will have to defend as well as they have tonight. Um, and be a threat in the counter attack uh, again. And um, if they do that, they'll give themselves a chance of, of winning the game and, and qualifying. Pat, how confident are you feeling that, that Scotland can get to the knockout stages? History would suggest not. Tonight's performance might suggest that they can do it. I don't think there's a great deal between the two teams, um, but I think we are capable. Of the, and, the, and the belief we've got from this one today, and remember, we've got a point. <laughs> kind of helps and makes you feel a little bit better. And if you're Hungarians, you know, you're maybe a bit of a downer just now. You know you're going to keep on fighting for it. And maybe it'll be by then they might think three points is not going to be enough. And that may be a psychological it's a downer for them as well. But there's so many positives to take out. I mean, before we go, I I'm, I'm, don't want us to go out of this without mentioning McTominay, Scott McTominay today, right? So I'm giving him the goal, right? <laughs> Whether if we're not giving him it or not. But see the big moments when Hanley hits the, 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 the post. He's right there. He nearly gets it. The Akanji, you know, kick off the line. You have a look at where Scott McTominay is. He's right there for the tap in if he doesn't get there. His ability to get to those positions, remember the volley that he had was screaming towards the goal as well. The big man's, I mean, he's fantastic when he goes into that position for us. And although parts of the first half he wasn't massively involved in the game, the effect that he's had for Scotland has been brilliant. And, uh, He's a big, big player for us, and I said right at the start, we have to be horrible to, to play against. I think we were quite horrible to play against tonight, and I'm delighted with that. That's very enjoyable to watch from a Scotland perspective. Thank you very much to Pat and Ali here in Cologne. Thank you very much to Charlie, and thank you to Chris. Where in Germany are you, Chris? Um, I'm in Essen, the, the wonderful city of oh, Essen. Oh, you're in Essen, and the number for 606... <laughs> Is um, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, oh wait. Five. five nine oh nine six nine three. Correct. And if you want to get in touch with Chris and with Robbie for six oh six, it's coming up at any moment now on Five Live Sport. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Thanks, Kelly.